coolness and um, I'm glad we're opening another cooling station today. Yep. Heard that, but you know what I'm hearing now, because we do have to wrap this conversation up, but I'm also hearing that there's people, especially um, seniors and that it's not just the cooling station, it's the lack of access to community and people that they're really missing now. We heard that um, at council last week. The the isolation it, is taking its toll, right? Yeah, it's too long. It's it, yep. it's too long. Um, and I know a lot of them have like given up the. Uh, they're not staying away from their grandchildren. You know, they're just not. So, how are we doing for quorum? You have a quorum. Great. Is it nine thirty? Yes, it is. it is. Awesome. Perfect timing. Yeah, we fluffed our way through that one, Jeff. Okay, so good morning, everyone. This is a public meeting to consider the proposed comprehensive official plan and zoning bylaw amendments listed as items two to seven on today's agenda. For the items just mentioned, only those who make oral submissions today or written submissions before the amendments are adopted may appeal the matter to the local planning appeal tribunal. In addition, the applicant may appeal the matter to the local planning appeal tribunal if council does not adopt an amendment within 90 days of receipt of the application for zoning and 120 days for an official plan amendment um, to submit written comments on these amendments prior to their consideration by city council on July 15th, please email or call the committee um, coordinator who um, is Melody Bethany. And uh, if you're on the line and uh, then you got here with because Melody helped you to do so. so Easy to find that information. Now, yesterday, late breaking news uh, for us that really um, all of you will be interested in. Um, as you may be aware, the province announced its COVID-19 Economic Recovery Act 2020, a made in Ontario plan with a goal to help boost the province's economic recovery, create thousands of jobs, put more opportunities within reach of businesses, get infrastructure projects built faster and improve the quality of life in every community across the province. And it affects what we do here as a committee, which is why I'm bothering to, to mention it, because I'm sure that each of you have seen bits and pieces of it. Well, um, it includes everything from the Building Code Act to the Drainage Act, which I, I'm sure that our Councillor Moffat is like uh, extremely excited to uh, get into the weeds on. Reducing delays for environmental infrastructure projects, modernizing and streamlining the Environmental Assessment Act and changes to the Planning Act and Development Ch Charges Act, which includes discussions around inclusionary zoning, community benefits charge, and the Transit-Oriented Communities Act. Those are, we've had much discussion about, and, uh, and you know, I'm really glad that they have um, uh, gone in the direction that they have, but uh, Mr. Willis advised me this morning that he and legal staff will be happy to appear at the next planning committee meeting to answer questions on it, which is August the 27th. Since the legislation was just released yesterday, we didn't have enough time uh, for them to do the analysis that's necessary, but they've already begun that analysis uh, to determine what this is going to mean for the city of Ottawa, and we'll bring forward that IPD on the changes uh, prior to our meeting in August. So I know that uh, everyone will be keenly interested in having that uh, news update and discussion at the end of August. So. Um, let's do a quorum check right now, uh, rather than go through the regrets and unprovided. Uh, Councillor Dudas? I'm here. Councillor Tierney? Present. Councillor Leeper? Present. Councillor Shirelli? Councillor Brockington? Here. Uh, Councillor Moffat? Here. Councillor Hubley? Here. And Vice Chair Gower. Here. Perfect. Okay, any declarations of interest? Other than other than Councillor Lieber would be interested in a really good deal on an air conditioner. And I'm here too, John. John, oh, just you, for the Eli? Oh, thank you, Eli. See, I never can see you when so I don't know. So thank you. A whole bunch of other people are here as well, but for quorum purposes. Thank you, uh, Chair El Shantiri. And Madam okay. Chair. Yes. Um, are you aware that I have a motion on behalf yes. of Councillor Deans? Okay. Yes, I and do. Where would we put that? Well, we'll put it when we get there, and I'll let you know. 
Confirmation of minutes from the uh, June 25th, 2020. Carried? Carried. Carried. Any objections? None? Okay, the first item is the front ending report. Chair, oversight. Uh, before you do, would you like to read the chair statement, the OP and zoning items? I did that. Sorry, I may have missed it. Yeah, you did because I was I got lost in that other conversation about IPDs and stuff. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Better to be safe than sorry. Um, and and to answer your question, Councillor Brogdon, after we go through the agenda, then we'll put that motion forward that you're moving on behalf of Councillor Deans. Okay. Uh, front ending report: oversizing of the road and sewer on Cambrian Road from Old Green Bank Road to New Green Bank Road alignment. We have nobody at all to speak. Um, does anyone have any questions? If not, can we, is it carried? Carried. Carried. Perfect. Okay, item number two is the official plan and zoning bylaw amendments, 1178 Cummings Avenue and 1098 Ogilvy Road in Councillor Tierney's uh, ward. Uh, we have, um, we have a bunch of people, including uh, Dennis Archambault, um, who is the owner to speak, I think, if necessary. Is that correct? And then there's a bunch of other people as a resource. Does anyone have any questions on this item? So, Mr. Archambault, are you there? Denny? Is he there? He is there. Can you uh, unmute yourself, please? Do you need to speak if we're prepared to carry this item? Hello, can you hear me? That's better. Okay. I can almost hear you. So do you need to speak if we're prepared to carry this item? Um, Just a yes or a no. Can anybody hear him? No, none of us can hear you. But I had a conversation with him yesterday, Chair, and checked that that was the case, and he said it was okay. fine. Perfect. So on this item, everyone, is it uh, carried? Carried. Carried. Anybody uh, dissenting? No? Thank you. Item number three is the zoning bylaw amendment for five Orchard Drive in Stittsville. Um, we have... Um, uh, Cody Camp Campanelli speaking on behalf of the Campanelli group, the applicant, if necessary. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, Cody, do you need to speak? I'm just confirming what you've already offered here, but do you need to speak if we're prepared to carry this item? No. Perfect. So this item is carried? Carried. Any dissent? Any dissent, anyone? No? Thank you. Okay, the next one is the zoning bylaw amendment, 35 Highbury Park Drive. This has been going on so, this is in my ward, it's been going on so long that uh, uh, the first meeting I had it was at least 19 years ago. And one of the people coming to see me was um, from uh, Peel and he was Vern White for this church. <laughs> I'm so happy, that's why I'm, I'm like, why is nobody here to, to, to speak to it? But uh, I'm really happy to see this finally. I want to thank uh, Dennis Warren-Nirmal for all of his patience over almost two decades <laughs> on a file. Uh, so does anyone have any questions for, um, for uh, Kelby? No? So is this item carried? Carried. Thank you. No dissents? Perfect. All right, next item is the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for 450 Rochester Street, 367, 369, and 371 Preston Street. So we have no one speaking, um, no delegation speaking in opposition. Uh, this is in Councillor McKinney's uh, ward. Uh, we do have a bunch of people here uh, that are prepared to speak if necessary. Um, Councillor McKinney, are you on today? No? Well, that, I think that, you know, Councillor McKinney is always here if, if, if uh, something is of concern to her. So uh, we have uh, prepared to speak Peter Hume, John Moser, Mike Casey, etc., Barry Hoban, a whole bunch of other people. 
Um, do any of you need to speak just for confirmation? Just Peter, if you're there, if, yeah, if you could speak. Jeff, do you have a question? No? Jeff? Uh, I am, have got my hands up. It's not a question for staff, just a comment. Okay. Um, no, we don't need to. Uh, we don't need to speak, Councillor Harder. Although Mike Casey would just like to uh, thank everyone for their hard work on the file. If you, if you'd allow. Them. Sure, and then we'll have the comment from uh, Councillor Leeper. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Committee, I want to thank the staff for their patience and the uh, incredible amount of time and effort they put into uh, making uh, this whole thing move forward. I'd also like to thank the ward councillor um, for uh, her assistance in dealing with uh, the community associations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Leeper? Thanks. Um, I, I know Councillor McKenney is not here, and I, I just wanted to reiterate that she is supportive of the proposal. I note that they made a um, comment with respect to the amount of parking that is in this, and I'm sure that they'll be uh, trying to work with staff as we go through the site plans on the various different um, developments that will result from this secondary plan in an effort to bring those down. This is very close to the Gladstone Station, um, and I know they um, are very concerned about um, adding as much parking as they are now next to uh, that future LRT station. Okay, sounds good. Thank you everybody. So on this item, um, the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for 450 Rochester Street, 367, 369 and 371 Preston Street, is it carried? Carried. carried. Any dissents? Great, thank you everyone. Uh, the next item up is the zoning bylaw amendment 6758 and 6766 Rock Street. This one is in Orleans. Um, and um, we have uh, only the applicant is here, Chris Jalkowski, Planning by People, City Villages. Uh, he only, he says he only needs to speak if necessary. Does anyone have any questions on this item? No, Chris, do you, um, are you standing by what you said and you don't need to speak if we don't uh, have any questions? I don't need to speak, thank you. Thank you very much. So is this item carried? Super. Carried. No dissents? Perfect. Thanks everybody. Okay, the next one is being held because we do have delegations on this, a lot of them. And this is a zoning bylaw amendment in Councillor Eglai's ward, uh, one and nine Canfield Road and 1315 and 1715 Park Mount Crescent. So as I said, we're gonna hold that item. And uh, we'll come back, there's a couple of motions that we'll put on the floor uh, by Councillor Leeper when we come back to it. Now, now we do have an item that Councilor Brockington would like to move to add to the agenda today. It is time sensitive and it's on behalf of Councilor Deans. Councilor Brockington. Thank you, Madam Chair. Do you want me to just read the motion or what would you like me to do? I, I, I just would like you to tell us why, why you're doing this. So uh, Madam Chair, yes, on behalf of Councillor Deans as the acting councillor for her ward during her absence, I'm moving an addition of 1770 Hetherington Road to the omnibus report in order to provide staff adequate time to respond to a request from Councillor Deans regarding the preparation of the next omnibus zoning bylaw amendments report. Uh, planning committee is asked to approve that this item be added to the agenda for consideration at its meeting today. It's just to ensure that um, if a community facility is added to the Hetherington community right now, the zoning, the zoning only permits a building no greater than 300 square meters. It's likely a community facility would be larger than 300 square meters. And so this direction would be to go to staff to amend to ensure that this property is added to their omnibus report. So um, maybe we can deal with that right now. On the motion to add to the agenda, is that carried? Carried. Carried. And does anyone carried. have any questions or are you prepared to carry this uh, addition to the omnibus motion? Any questions? Let me just see, I don't, I don't have my hands waving. Nope. 
Um, okay, so is this item carried? Carried? Carried. carried. No dissents? Perfect. All thank right, you. thank you, everybody. Thanks, Councilor Brockington and Councilor Deans. I'm sure you're listening in. Hello. Um, nice to see something uh, coming from the uh, BBRN um, work that we did, uh, in particular in this case on Hetherington. So we'll go back to our first held item, which is our only held item. And that is item number seven, which is a zoning bylaw amendment for one and nine Canfield Road and 1315 17 Park Mount Crescent. And we're going to have a presentation on this. And we are going to have a presentation from Mary Dickinson, who is the planner. Mary, are you there? Um, yes, Chair Harder, I'm here. I'm just under um, Mr. James's uh, camera. So okay. Should we start with the presentation? Yes, that's that's exactly what okay. I'd like you to do. Great, I'll just wait for it to come up and then we will get going. And after the presentation, we'll put those uh, two motions on the table and then we'll get into the delegations. Okay. So whenever you're ready. Great. Uh, good morning, my name is Mary Dickinson. I'm the staff file lead for this item, which is for a zoning bylaw amendment at one and nine Canfield Road and 1315 and 17 Park Mount Crescent. The purpose of this rezoning is to facilitate the expansion of the existing St. Mary's Coptic Orthodox, Ch Orthodox Church, which is located um, uh, at one Canfield and is to accommodate a new community building on site. Next slide, please. The subject site is located in the Trend Arlington neighborhood of Ward 9 at the northwest corner of Green Bank Road which is an arterial road and Canfield Drive, which is a collector road. The site is surrounded to the north, west and south by a low density neighborhood made up, up of detached dwellings. To the east beyond Green Bank Road is a five story residential apartment and two medical office buildings with associated uh, surface parking. Immediately across the street from the church is two Canfield Road um, on the corner there at, at Canfield and Green Bank. Uh, which is a daycare that is owned and operated by the St. Mary's Coptic Church. <clears throat> Next slide, please. The subject lands are identified with the red outline. The site is made up of five parcels, including one Canfield, which is the site of the existing church, and nine Canfield, 13, 15, and 17 Park Mount Crescent, which are residentially zoned properties that are currently occupied by detached dwellings. The homes at nine Canfield and 15 and 17 Park Mount are proposed to, for removal as part of the redevelopment plan. And the home at 13 Park Mount is proposed to remain and is intended to be used exclusively for a, as a detached dwelling. The expanded church property results in the site having new street frontage on Park Mount Crescent. Next slide, please. The subject site is designated general urban area according to the official plan. The staff recommendation is for the zoning of the residentially zoned portion of the subject site to minor institutional zone to match the zoning of the existing church property. So area A is the residentially zoned portion, which is to go to an institutional zone. Area B is, is to have a slight amendment to the zoning, but will remain under the institutional zoning. Uh, specific amendments to the institutional zoning include a parking rate reduction to the new community center building from 3.4 parking spaces per 100 square meters of gross floor area to 3.3 parking spaces per 100 square meters of gross floor area. Also, relief is required for a landscape buffer uh, adjacent to Canfield Road. Rewording of the existing site-specific exception that allows the associated daycare across the street to park on the church site is proposed. Uh, a reduction to the maximum maximum height is uh, is proposed also going from 18 meters maximum, which is the current in the institutional zoning, to a maximum of 11 meters. And a requirement that the community center building be permitted as an ancillary use to the church only. Next slide, please. The proposed church redevelopment plans include the retention of the home at 13 Park Mount Crescent, as I mentioned. A schedule is proposed to be applied to the site to ensure this portion of the subject property is limited to being used as a detached dwelling and no parking lot is allowed within this area as shown on the, uh, on the map on the screen. Next slide, please. 
The two concept plans shown here illustrate the evolution of the project from the time of initial consultation in 2017 2018 to the 2019 concept plan presented to the city. The initial plan, which is on the left hand side, uh, contemplated a larger property expansion and removal of six homes and redevelopment of both the church building and the, a new community building. The 2019 concept plan on the right shows the evolution of the pro uh, proposal um, to how it is. It's very similar to how it is today, which um, sees the removal of three residential homes and the retention of the existing church building. Next slide, please. The right hand image is the current site plan for the proposed church expansion and the left image are the elevation plans provided by the applicant. Uh, the, on the site plan, the community building is the larger dark gray building with the existing church, the light gray building immediately to the south. Access to the site is exclusively from Canfield Road. The bottom elevation on the left shows the proposed community building and the existing church. The top of the existing arched roof line of the church is at the approximate height of the new building, which is at a maximum height of 11 meters. Quality materials, glazing, and articulation of the height and facade of the community building all contribute to uh, appropriately integrating the building within its surroundings. Next slide, please. This is a street level visualization of the, uh, that the applicant has provided. Here, we're looking east from Park Mount Crescent towards the church property. Retention of mature trees, landscaping, and screen fence are proposed to mitigate the institutional use and the surrounding residential from the surrounding residential neighborhood. No access is proposed from Park Mount Crescent, as the intention is to isolate the traffic and parking for the site to the arterial and collector roadways to the property from Canfield Crescent. Next slide, please. Oh, that's it, thank you. Um, this is a street level visualization looking at the subject site from Canfield Road with the existing church in the foreground and the proposed community building behind. This proposal is consistent with the official plan and the provincial policy statement. The zoning amendment facilitates the growth of a community serving use within the city. And that's the end of the presentation. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, so Councillor Leeper, um, if you want, you can defer to uh, Councillor Aglai, the, uh, the moving of the motions, but how about you just table it? He can speak to speak, speak to it briefly, just to explain what each of them are, is about. That would be great. Yeah, and uh, Keith, uh, if you want to go ahead with that, I'm, I'm happy to move uh, move these motions. So the first one, you just want to introduce the first one and then he can just uh, say why he's moving that. So the uh, the first motion is to carve out the, um, oh, sorry, it is to defer this um, uh, item. There is, uh, I'll let Keith speak to why, but I, I believe that we need to uh, put this off for uh, for some time in order to give Councillor Eagle the uh, chance to uh, come up with a, a better site plan for this um, for this property. So, so Jan, uh, Chair, if I may, uh, thank you for doing this, Jeff. And um, the uh, I want to thank all the uh, committee members as well that have taken the opportunity to either speak to me or speak to community members about about this particular proposal. Um, this proposal has been in the works for literally years, uh, not quite as long as the one the chair referenced at the beginning of the meeting, but. Uh, the original pre-consult uh, lapsed and the process had to be started again. Uh, so when that, I, I'd, I would ask you to look at this motion in that context, that, that time is not of the essence, if you will, in moving forward today. Um, there, there is, as many of you know from our discussions, the community would like to sit with the church uh, community, the church board, and try and uh, come up with a more creative way to deal with the, the parking issues. The, the community is not against the church expanding its footprint. Uh, they'll, make, they'll make that clear in their presentations, but they, they, they are very concerned about the taking away and the removal and de demolition of perfectly good residential homes in the middle of their residential street. Uh, when parking abounds, 
in various options uh, around the proposed uh, the proposed building. So uh, I want to thank uh, as well uh, Jeff Paulwin. I reached out to him the other day. We did have a chat. We we kicked back and forth a few ideas. And while I can't stand in front of you today and say we've resolved this because we haven't, uh, uh, it was uh, it was positive that that he took the call on behalf of the church and that we were able to have a discussion. And I'd like that discussion to to continue with more uh, involvement from community members who have organized around this issue and actual church board members uh, so they can work together as a community uh, to try and to try and resolve this. And as I say, this has been going on for many, many years. And the so time is not of the essence. You do not have to make a decision today on this. You can certainly, it's within your authority, but but you don't have to and and I don't think any timelines or be any issues in that regard going forward if this was put off, for example, uh, to the next planning committee and gave people four or six weeks to kind of concentrate, sit down, try and sort it out and uh, come back with, with uh, hopefully with, with a different proposal. So that, that's motion number one. And I'll turn it back to Jeff and I'll ask Jeff to speak to motion number two as well, because the idea for motion number two actually came from a discussion with, with, with that counselor uh, Leeper. And uh, so he's agreed to to explain the rationale behind this motion uh, to the committee. Okay, okay and just to be just to be clear, we're not having a discussion about either of these motions right now. We haven't had the delegations uh, either sure. for or against. So this is just so if you could just keep it very simple, Jeff. This is just to get it on the table so that people are aware of what's coming. And then I'm sure that some people will want to ask for clarification from the perspective of the community. Uh, with regard to the men, the motions, and also the, the uh, go ahead. Thank you, Councillor Leeper. Thanks, Chair. Uh, so the what you're going to hear from the the residents is really concerns about the the parking that is coming on to a residential street. I, I think one of our um, uh, critical principles moving forward is that we don't replace housing with parking. And the motion that I am putting on the table um, would take the properties at 15 Park Mount, 17 Park Mount and 9 Canfield Road off the table of a rezoning so that the only matter that we would be rezoning today is the church and the uh, the new community center, which I think enjoys uh, fairly uh, widespread support, um, but it doesn't replace residential properties with parking. Chair, did you want me to read the whole thing or do you want me to uh, get into no, that later? I think, yeah, we'll do that later because I think that's enough of an introduction. I should have said that in addition to the community, the uh, applicant, I also will want comments when we get to it from uh, Ms. Dickinson and uh, Mr. Mark. All right, so let's go to our first uh, delegation. Uh, and our first delegation is um, Devin Harris. And just to remind everybody, or just to tell you, because this may be your first um, uh, time visiting us, the, uh, the rules that we have uh, give you five minutes to present. Okay, I'm just going to start a timer to keep myself from going over that. Well, um, actually, actually, uh, Miss Duffany, our committee coordinator, will let you know when there's one minute left. So okay. my, my name is Devin Harris. I grew up and was raised on Park Mount. My parents live at 21. Um, I lived there from the day I was born until the day I moved into my own home in the Ottawa area in the West End in my early 20s. I spent all of my formulative years running, biking in the community, in this peaceful, quiet community of Trent Village. And we went to school in the neighborhood. We did summer camps. I had friends. Um, so this is really like the heart of where I grew up and, and where I'm from. Um, I am of the personal belief that the city should deny the proposed bylaw amendment for turning the houses in for on 15, 17, 19, and 9 Canfield into institutional land. Um, I think there's a few reasons that I personally am against the bylaw amendments, and I'll just kind of briefly touch on them. Um, I think one of the reasons I'm against it in this time for sure is uh, that we have a severe housing shortage here in the city. And I know lots of friends and family um, starting families and, and wanting to buy homes and are having trouble doing so. Um, because there's just no, the market is so hot and things are going and not a lot of houses are for sale. And I know that people would love to live 
in a community like Trend Village, uh, in a community with a quiet street, with a crescent, with you know low traffic and and really old homes and beautiful beautiful old homes. Um, and I know that we are currently seeing bidding wars and people can't buy. And I think that it would be a real um, a real issue to have these houses just turn into a parking lot and not be able to see them people become part of a community and become part of the city. Uh, another big reason, which I guess um, is kind of being addressed differently, I don't, the, the, the things came to, seem to be changing, but um, is this whole idea that this community center is, is very needed in this community to provide uh, a space for people to do, you know, community things like the library and do that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, there's lots of other community centers in Trend Village. There is a community center that we know we've used for city meetings and also multiple other schools. There's another church. Um, so I think that that, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's, it's as necessary for that purpose, but that's, um, and then I think the main issue that I have and that I sort of was brought up previously, so I feel like it's kind of repetitive at this point, but um, is the idea of just removing a residential home, a 60 or 70 year old home to put in a parking lot, to, to change it from, you know, a place where there's families and homes and, and really that community involvement and to just replace that with pavement, with concrete, with hard lighting and cars pulling in and shining into other people's lights. and you know, there's the idea that, that 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 this is a better use of space when there's already a home here. It's not vacant land, um, and to tear that down, and I think that it will really lose that that character and community of these neighborhoods that are super quiet and that are really wonderful neighborhoods to live in and to grow up in, and um, and Parkland specifically. You know, it's it's not a cut through street. It's not an artillery road. It's not a it doesn't gather commuter traffic, it's the Crescent, and everyone who drives down there drives down there for a purpose, you know, to go home, to go to their families. And I think that um, it's really important to keep that as part of the community, to, to keep it the way it is, and, you know, and to keep these homes there to house families and to house people. Um, so that's my uh, piece to say. Thank you very much well, for having me. Well, thank you very much for uh, for coming up today and for speaking about the history of the community. I don't see anyone uh, waving at me, uh, which is what we say in Zoom okay. world now. Um, so thank you again. And and the next person I'll call is uh, Tom Cordelia or Tom. Tom, you know who you are. How do I? How should I be saying your last name? Is Tom there, uh, Melody? Yeah. Oh, I think I think he's not that? unmuted. Oh, unmute yourself, please. Again. There. Oh. You hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. You just don't see me. No, we don't. <laughs> uh, can <laughs> I please tell me um, how to how to pronounce your last name? Cordilla. Cordella, thank you very much. You have five minutes, sir. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, basically, I'm the resident at uh, Two Park Mount, which is at the corner of Park Mount and Banner. I'm a retired minister in the United Church of Canada. That in 19 in in oh good heavens in well in 2015 I moved into the neighborhood and was quite taken aback by its quiet little nature alongside a major artery like Greenbank. And that really appealed to me. I considered myself moving into a phase of life that I considered to be uh, retired and uh, truly embracing that responsibility of being retired. Uh, and I found the community and the place so attractive uh, and so appealing in that you walk onto a crescent after you step off Green Bank and you just go deeper and deeper into a pleasant, quiet neighborhood residence that has lots of green and, and a lot of family activity, people walking dogs, that kind of thing. So I considered myself to be a happy uh, sort of suburban recluse at this stage of my life. 
I also was a minister though that served in the province of Quebec uh, 23 years in the St. Therese Rosemere uh, pastoral charge, as well as 10 years with the Ganesatage uh, United Community in Oka among the Mohawks. And one of the things I was involved with while minister at Rosemere was a millennial project that saw the church enter into an arrangement with the town of Rosemere to develop a much needed enlarged community center. We did something kind of radical back then. But we did something quite out of precedent that neither city nor United Church of Canada ever had to deal with before. We basically turned over our church and the vast property that it sat on to the town for $1. And you can well imagine the objection people within church circles involved in finance and administration had to say about something as wild as that. But the project came through and it came through as a result of people really working together. Um, stepping out of our boxes, dreaming together and creating something that really would serve not simply the church community or the city of the town of Rosemere or the wider community of the town, but a project that built true community just by virtue of the discussions that took place. Um, here, when I come here and found that this project emerged basically almost like came out of the blue, uh, really struck me for what was so lacking in this process of giving and taking and not of really working and talking together. Uh, I don't envy your responsibility of having to adjudicate this situation and striving to find some sort of compromise and, and it sort of looks like the proposal that doesn't see the demolition of as, as, was, of as many homes as was originally conceived as being a reasonable compromise. But quite frankly, in my honest opinion and reflection, a compromise here does not really do justice for all the parties involved. When you look at the original plan that the applicant had and the size of the facility they wanted and needed for their own future and growth, and when you look at what this is, I, I can't imagine them being terribly satisfied with this compromise either nor does it really satisfy the residents who see a dramatic change in their neighborhood. Yes, uh, three homes instead of maybe five or six, but it, 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 it just doesn't do justice. I think, frankly, if the parties, and I would also challenge the community of Ottawa, the municipality itself, to really get involved in this process, to, to think wider. I mean, there is a vision here that was uh, reflected when this community was developed many years ago, where does that change? How does that change? And who really changes it? Uh, I think a lot of cards need to be put on the table. And I certainly, as a resident, would certainly welcome the participation of Ottawa directly. And yeah, how do we shape up this zoning of Green Bank and all the hopes we have for the future? When you consider the amount of the traffic that's likely to be going on Green Bank once Amazon builds their facility in Barhaven. This is going to be a very busy neighborhood, a very busy thoroughfare, and it really requires visioning to, to, to do justice to all the parties involved. And that's what I find so frustrating here is that, yes, I've been talking with residents and involved with residents trying to put an end to the proposal, but it's really a hope of building something together. I'm sort of sad that you don't have my photo uh, in, in, the, in the view. I mean, I, I wore my clerical collar and it just was totally nuts to do that today. But <laughs> I, I have a little emblem that was given to me by a Mi'kmaq uh, native who died some years ago, but who had been a victim of the residential school system. And it basically has a, a hand with the classic symbol of the red, white, or, uh, yellow, and the black quadrants in it of symbolizing how we need it to work together. And I would like to just basically end by saying that I hope that indeed we can work together here 
and really so, do sir, something that is I amazing. have to. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Egli has a question for you. Sure. Very, thank you very much, Madam Chair, and, and, and thank you, Tom. I just have one quick question for you. If, if the committee decided to, in fact, defer this project until the next uh, uh, committee meeting, uh, for example, which would be in uh, late August, I believe, would you be prepared, not only as a community member, but with someone who has experience and expertise in a project such as this, to be part of a working group with your community and 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 with the church board and its community. I guess by virtue of wearing this crazy collar, I'm going to have to say yes to that question. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, seeing no <clears throat> no other questions. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Clark Frost is the next uh, uh, delegation to speak. Clark, are you here? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Thank you. Chair. Uh, having to follow up from Tom is, is a big task, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Clark Cross. I live on Park Mount Crescent. I imagine on this committee you encounter scenarios that often pit the interests of developers against residents who are opposed to any change to their communities. Let me just start off by saying, as Tom already said, we're not that. What's the term? Uh, bananas. Build absolutely nothing anywhere near anything. We are not opposed to smart development. We want the church to thrive in our community, and we want to preserve our homes on our, and our quiet residential streetscapes. We've tirelessly worked to propose solutions that achieve both. All that's lacking is a willingness from the church to dialogue with us, its neighbours. My remarks today will focus on the history with the proponent, highlight solutions, as well as inconsistencies between the planning document or the planning document and the city's official plan. Let me briefly back up a little bit. My wife and I moved to Trent Arlington in 2008. A few weeks later, we welcomed the birth of our son, Gabriel. We moved to Trent Arlington because it is quiet, safe, and a diverse community where residents include other young families like us and retirees. St. Mary's Coptic Church hasn't just been a part of our community, it's a part of our lives. My son was registered in their daycare for years and my wife and I regularly attended events at the church while our son was enrolled there. It was a positive relationship. Since then, we've seen another side of the church and its interactions with its neighbors that stand in stark contrast with what I would call a good neighbor. Unbeknownst to those of us in the community, many years ago, the church began to secretly gobble up residential properties on Park Mount Crescent and, Cran and Campfield Drive that were adjacent to its property line. Most homeowners, save one, bowed to pressure and sold their homes to the well-financed applicant. We only became aware that the church had become a land baron in Trent Arlington when they announced plans to dramatically reshape the community by building an oversized community center and converting homes to parking. The proponent placed a bet that the planning committee would grant its request to demolish perfectly livable homes, materially and permanently altering the fabric of the community for its own benefit, regardless of the impact on the community in which it coexists, all while ignoring solutions. Under the proposal before you, three properties, two on Park Mount, one on Canfield, would be rezoned and demolished to provide an estimated 27 to 35 parking stalls. Think about that. The public interest in preserving housing and communities isn't worth 35 parking spaces. We believe this is unacceptable because the church is surrounded by an ocean of parking all within a one minute walk of the church and community center. Furthermore, it owns a large parcel of land at 173, 175 Green Bank that is sat undeveloped and often in a dilapidated state mere steps away. Set aside the fact that there is abundant parking nearby. The community center is on a scale that is too large for its current or potentially expanded site. It's over seven times as large as the main church building, tightly compressed, and would tower over its neighboring properties, casting them in shadow. It needs to be scaled back to respect the environment in which it exists. Other concerns. I called the church a land baron earlier on. The applicant owns other properties on Park Mount Crescent that are not a part of this proposal. As part of our efforts to fully understand the cumulative impact of the church's ambitions, we've sought clarity. What assurances can they give the community that they don't have visions to build bigger monuments to parking? It would be an act of good faith to share this with the community, but the applicant has shown no interest in discussing its plans. With regards to the official, with regards to the planning document and how it doesn't align with the official plan, 
The report claims that the impact of the proposed community building and adjacent neighborhood is considered minimal and it's compatible. We disagree. Demolishing homes and replacing it with soft landscaping and a fence to conceal a parking lot is not compatible. It creates a gap and is contrary to good street design. The report under the heading term of council priorities states this when project you... addresses thriving communities, excellence through innovation and sustainable infrastructure. Glaringly, the report provides no rationale to defend this claim. How does unnecessarily demolishing homes, converting them to parking, cutting down 14 mature trees, and approving a massive overbuilt structure achieve thriving communities or innovation? We'd like to know. As it stands, there's the lack of rationale and the report breeds some disillusionment. My comments have been to the committee, but as I wrap up, I'm speaking to our neighbor, the church, and its delegation of paid advocates, its lobbyists, its lawyers, its design firm. We can go forward and build intelligently. It requires a reset. It requires openness to love your neighbor and listen to the solutions that we are presenting. To the members of this committee, we encourage you to reject this proposal in its current form, to stand up for smart development and to support our motions to build thriving communities. We're committed to working with our neighbor so we all win. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, Councillor Hubley, you have a question, followed by Councillor El Shantiri. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question to the delegate. You, when you suggested that they uh, purchase the homes around there, can, can you just elaborate on what you're suggesting here? It sounded like they didn't want to sell their homes. Yeah, uh, you know, Councillor Hubley, that's a that's a great question. I think that you would have seen in the previous presentation that was uh, done by the planner that there was an initial proposal that went back to 2017, which included the demolition and rezoning of additional properties beyond what you currently have today. Um, one of the homes that they had sought to demolish has not sold. I think you're going to hear from that owner and they've scaled back the proposal. As I understand, there, there is at least one other property that I know of, I think it's at, addressed at, uh, my colleagues will correct me, uh, it's at Nine Park Mount that the church also owns, that's not a part of this proposal. And that's what we've wanted to understand. Well, we have the application in front of us that we already have some fundamental disagreement with, but what are your intentions for this other property that you own? I mean, I, I can only imagine, you know, that the surest predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And seeing- Okay, so, but that's not my question to you. Oh, my, the question was related to your comments about how they um, were able to attain these properties. Are you I'm, suggesting something wasn't done properly there? No, I'm not suggesting something wasn't done properly. And my remarks don't stay, say that at all. My remarks say that they purchased those properties uh, and it, we did not become aware of these mass purchases of properties within our neighborhood until suddenly we were presented with a plan for future development. I'm saying that there was no consultation before any of these purchases or any engagement with the community to measure and take the pulse of the community as to what this is something that we're thinking about doing and what do you think? There's been very little dialogue and we only became aware of the church's ambitions when the houses, when it became, came to public knowledge that the houses had been purchased and this was what they wanted to do. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Councillor El Shantiri. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Clark, for your presentation today and agreeing to meet with uh, the chair and I uh, this week, early this week. Uh, you mentioned, uh, your kids attend the daycare and that church. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. My so child Gabriel did. Yeah. So so basically it's more than just a church. It is it is also a community where uh, other kids from different group or different religious can attend that uh, that church daycare as well. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, it's a privately run daycare at 2 Canfield, which is across from the main site on the other side of Canfield Drive that they that they mm -hmm. operate for profit. And, and in your opinion, with your dialogue with the, with the church, has they come up with some compromise or uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure they didn't come up with everything you asked for. And I don't think that's going to be the case. But have 
have you folks in, in the church come to some dialogue and some common ground in, in, the, in the past? The, the only change that we've been able to see, like I say, is the reduction in the proposal from the 2017 version to the current version. But again, they hold other properties. Um, we have, uh, we've wanted to speak with them about ways to preserve the homes by tapping into this abundance of parking that is well within its walking distance of the church. Mm. We've wanted to tap into other solutions like developing their major parcel of land on 173, 175. It allows them to meet their parking needs, needs but it and allows us to preserve the, the aesthetics of the community and make it livable, unfortunately. And I know that Councillor Eglai has, has really tried to bring folks to the table. Um, when we've offered to have these discussions, it's been made clear to us that they will not, as part of the agenda, discuss anything that would propose to preserve the homes, which is our, our key objection. And I think that, you know, when, when they're right away just saying that we're not going to discuss anything other than rezoning and demolition, there's, there's sort of an, an, a, a, major, a major difference there, a failure to communicate. Thank you, Claude, for that. But I just, other than Councillor uh, Riley Brockington and myself, have the experience with uh, the, the new Canadian churches. I think uh, before COVID-19, Councillor Brockington will tell you uh, how much space uh, parking those churches require. So even my church on Donald Street, if I don't attend half an hour before Mass, most likely I will never find a parking spot and they have a huge area. So most people drive to those churches from all over the city. I, I appreciate that, but thank you. I actually for think that's, that's, that's a good point though, Councillor, because there is, there is a lot of parking and I think that will be yeah. mentioned in future Thanks. presentations. I would add though, you've highlighted the fact that people are driving to the church and it's an interesting juxtaposition because of course there's the church community and then there's the community of those of us who live within the community who are here permanently. Um, I don't envy the position you're in, but it, it, for those of us who live here, this is, this is permanent. This is permanent. And I, I would find it incredible that any person who would, including the, the lobbyists, including the members of the church, would not be like similarly opposed to this kind of development if it was in their backyard. There are solutions, there's ways to, to broker a solution uh, but those of us who live here permanently are going to live with the full-time effects of this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Eglai. Sorry, just unmuting myself, Chair. We'll get that eventually. Um, just, just one quick question to sort of put context. Um, Clark, you talked about other pieces of property being held by the church that are not part of this uh, particular application. And you also referenced an earlier version of this proposal, which involved some of those properties and, and also some property they, they didn't own and still don't own. Is, is it, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but so the committee can understand, is it, is it fair to say the concern is that potentially what's in front of the committee today is, is not in fact a, a scaled back version of what the church wants to do, but rather step one or phase one of what the church wants to do. And uh, over time, the remaining pieces of property and perhaps additional pieces of property on, this, on that street will come into play. So we'll go from a, the single building that they're proposing to, to build to something more like the earlier proposal, which would have also included a much larger uh, version of the, the actual church building. Councillor, thank you very much for your question. Um, that is a legitimate concern uh, because they continue to hold those, uh, those properties that are not a part of the new current proposal. We're wondering what their intentions are for that, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation. I guess I look at it this way. In many ways, I wonder, is this a strategic move on the part of the applicant realizing that perhaps proposing the demolition of additional homes as, as one proposal may not be a bridge too far. And they're gonna to try to eat this elephant in a bunch of little bites. I just threw in two metaphors there in one sentence. There must be some sort of a word for that. Um, but I mean, the, the, the thing is, we would love to know what they wanna do with it. Um, 
there's been no assurances that they have don't have these grander ambitions. I mentioned cumulative impacts. I honestly do not know because the church has been unwilling to tell us what they intend to do with the other properties that they hold on Park Mount Crescent. And so unfortunately, what that does is it it breeds a little bit of suspicion. Um, it doesn't instill a great deal of trust um, that there is still a grander vision here and that the impact to the community is just going to get worse. And if the planning committee approves this, then I raise the question, well, what's next? And if they come back with the phase two, and again, I'm speaking of, you know, of possible scenarios here, you know, I can only imagine the application might be, well, you approve this rezoning and demolition once, and now we're here to ask for just a little more, just a little more. Um, okay. At what point do, do we establish some limits between the interests of the residents and the interests of the church? And I'm saying also, going back to my original point, I don't think we actually have to choose because I think that there is a solution that allows everyone to win. Okay. That uh, it th counts? Th 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 yes, it is. Thank you, Clark. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Christy Allen or Sean Doherty. They're the owners at 11 Park Mount. Christy or Sean? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. And uh, thank you to the planning committee members for uh, hearing us today. I'm, my name is Christy Allen and my husband is Sean Doherty. He's here with me as well. Um, and we are the owners of 11 Park Mount Crescent. So we're the owners of the one property along Park Mount Crescent that uh, was referenced earlier. Um, we are adjacent to 13 Park Mount Crescent, uh, which is currently owned by the church. And we're also adjacent to nine Park Mount Crescent, which is also owned by the church. Um, so we're the one property along this stretch of properties that are owned by the church that is not owned by the church, obviously. Um, so we have some specific concerns that are sort of unique to our property. Um, we share the concerns of our, our community members and um, we share all of those concerns. And I wish I could speak to all of those concerns as well as our specific concerns. Um, but again, because of our unique situation, my focus is really going to be on um, the specific impact to our property. Um, so I wanted to, to note at the outset, we have provided written submissions that I'm hoping all of the committee members have received. And I'm hoping that you will all read those and consider those when you're making your decision. Um, at the outset, I did wanna note that as has been expressed by my fellow um, community members, one of our main concerns is that the church has not consulted with us at all. So notwithstanding the significant development that's going up both behind us and next to us, there's been no consultation uh, with us in terms of what our concerns might be or what our interests might be. So, so far in terms of the applicant's proposal, none of it um, considers the impact of this development on our particular property. Um, and uh, we also wanted to note that the comments and concerns that we had provided to the planning department had not been included in their report. And so it was important to us to have our, com our comments provided to the committee because they haven't yet been expressed to the committee or the committee doesn't have those concerns before them other than as, as received from us. So our main concerns that I'm going to speak about, again, there's more in our written submissions, but the ones I'm going to speak about are the massing and location, the fencing, and then the maintenance of the property um, that is currently owned by the church. So uh, with respect to massing and location, it's obviously a large structure and it's going to be located 7.5 meters from our property line, which is the minimum setback. As I mentioned, it's gonna be erected both behind us and beside us. So we are gonna be surrounded by this building. It's actually in a U shape if you look at it um, so that it can effectively surround our property. So our biggest concern is that we are literally going to be in the shadow of this building that's going to tower over our property on a permanent basis. Um, that leads to a concern that uh, we've had all along, which is that um, there may be some desire obviously to have us sell to the church. And I think if uh, there was an, a large structure in behind us that um, towered over our property, it might provide us with impetus to sell to the church, which would then mean they would have both our property and nine Park Mount Crescent allowing for that sort of further phase development that, that um, Mr. Cross, uh, Clark Cross spoke about just a few moments ago. Um, so we are concerned about that. And what we're asking the committee to do is to uh, increase the setback requirement for this particular building and to 
reduce the building height, at least along the northern face of the building. That's the building face that's going to uh, face our property and that we are going to be affected by. In terms of like what um, uh, the setback should be or what the reduction in height should be, what we would have liked to have seen, uh, what we would have expected from a good neighbor would have been a sunshade study to show us exactly what the, how what they're proposing would impact us. That was never done. Um, it hasn't even been considered. As I said, we've had no dialogue with the church. So um, we did request it through the planning department, but obviously the proponent decided not to go ahead with that. So if this, if this decision gets deferred, as Mr. Uh, Councillor Egley has uh, motioned, one thing that we would ask is that a sunshade study be completed so that we can um, assess the impact on our, on our building. Uh, the other things that I wanted to speak about, the other thing is fencing. There is no perimeter fencing that's going up around this entire development site. So notwithstanding what's in the pl planning rationale, um, there's one small section of new fencing that is proposed. The rest of the fencing is presumably going to be the fencing that's exi that exists, which is in a complete state of disrepair. Uh, the fences are decades old and are falling down. They're not safe and they certainly don't provide security or a proper buffer. So we are asking that a proper buffer uh, fence be erected around the entire perimeter so that we have proper separation and our neighbors do. Again, this is if the proposal were to move forward. This leads to our, my final concern, which is the issue of maintenance. And so I did mention this in my written submissions, and I'll mention it again, um, that the fencing is in a terrible state of uh, maintenance. Um, the properties all around us are also in a terrible state of maintenance. So all of the properties that are owned by the church. Thank alone, you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Christy. That's uh, five minutes, and I've been a little bit negligent, which I normally never am. So, um, but I see that Councillor Eglai has a question for you. Councillor Eglai. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. It's, it's, it's more of a very quick comment. I want to thank Christy and Sean for providing their comments. And while I don't have any questions for you, based on what you presented, both in writing and, and this morning in person, I will have some questions for staff around your concerns. So I just wanted to make you aware that I will be following that up. Okay, thank, thank you, Madam you. Chair. Madam Chair. Thank you. I see no one else waving, so thank you very much. Next up is Trevor Poole. Trevor, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, and thank you very much, and good morning uh, to, morning. to the councillors. Um, my name is uh, Trevor Poole. I live on 16 Springdale Crescent and have been uh, part of the neighbourhood for over 20 years uh, here in Trent Ellington. So my family literally grew up uh, in this neighbourhood. Uh, I'm here to outline a couple of issues related to the proposal at One Canfield, um, just to re reiterate a few of the points that have been made and um, hopefully have a discussion. Um, the first point is, even though the planning department has outlined that this building fits on this particular site and is technically allowed, when you look at all of the details that have been provided, the current structure feels like it is simply being jammed into this particular site, causing a whole bunch of broader impacts related to the community. When you look at it on that broader perspective, it doesn't actually fit on the site for what they want. The key issue here is not that the applicant would like to put a community center. There, there have been no dialogue on it, even though the community groups have offered many times to come to the table, work with them on the proposal itself. Those have been rejected uh, time and time again, including this last proposal that is before you. So there has was previous attempts, there was a bigger proposal, there was different things years ago. On this specific item, we have been unsuccessful in having that discussion on the building and the massing itself. The second point that I would like to, to just raise, and again, it, it comes down to dialogue and discussion is the, the parking of this per site on, on this particular site due to the massing of the building they need to carve into the neighborhood and take down a bunch of homes to facilitate what they are proposing as required parking. Although there's an exception there that's being asked for and as articulated previously on this call, this kind of facility generates a lot of traffic on specific days, which is a huge community impact, which Councillor uh, Egley can uh, can uh, articulate uh, that there have been issues in the past related to parking already on this particular site. 
Um, the issue here uh, that I would like to, to call out is the applicant actually owns, uh, aside from all of the parking in the neighborhood that's, that's around, the applicant owns a couple of vacant lots 150 meters south of this particular site. It is really unclear why those, site, those uh, properties aren't being considered to meet their parking needs if they don't feel like uh, engaging some of the local communities uh, or the, the local um, businesses. I understand that there's potentially a, uh, you know, a vision uh, for those sites in, in some future state. The reality is they've been uh, empty for over 10 years, quite an eyesore to the community, uh, unfortunately, and, and there has been no discussion or, or understanding about what is the future vision for, for any of this as, as previously articulated. So I guess in summary, uh, from my point of view, and the community has, has attempted to engage many, many times and work collaboratively with the applicant uh, on the impact to our community and come up with a win-win for all stakeholders. Um, and even though we have taken a leadership position in that engagement, it has been rejected. Uh, we have been unsuccessful in securing even a basic dialogue uh, with, the, with the applicant to, get the, to have this facility into our neighborhood. And, just overall, the one thing I can know for sure, and you guys would know this as well, there can be no compromise if you can't have productive dialogue. So really we are asking to defer this particular motion so that we can have some productive dialogue and understand uh, a proposal that works for everyone. And are, are there any questions for me? Councilor Brockington has a question. Councilor Brockington. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Poole. Just there's there's a consistent message I'm hearing from residents who are uh, providing a delegation today, and that is an, an inability to dialogue or a, or a lack of desire by the applicant to dialogue. Has this always been the case? Have they, on other issues, been open with the community to talk, uh, or is it just unique to to this application? So I, I will be careful how I speak here. My real involvement started a couple of years ago, specific to this application. Um, however, there were, you know, they are they have been in this in this neighborhood for quite some time. Uh, how they engage with their local neighbors, uh, their immediate neighbors, is something uh, others on the call can speak better. For this particular one, though, uh, there has been very little uh, little engagement. Um, we've been reaching out through the counselor's office a number of times, also direct engagement uh, or attempted direct engagement with them. All of that has been rejected or accepted with a bunch of rules as previously stated, which isn't really a dialogue. If you can't talk about your issues openly, there is no way you can come to a compromise. If we start a compromise with, well, I'm only gonna talk about issue one, and you have five other things, even to articulate, whether we agree or not at the initial conversation isn't the point. If I can't articulate my concern, I guarantee you we will never get a compromise. Okay, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Poole. Um, I see no other hands. And by the way, um, for the applicant, Ms. Malosh, um, and Mr. Bishoy, Alfie, Sammy, um, we've heard repeatedly that you're not, um, that the applicant is not interested in having any conversations with uh, the community. So um, one of you please uh, undertake to say why that, why that is, uh, when it's your turn. Uh, next up is Christy Ross. She's the barrister and solicitor on behalf of Trend Arlington Residents for Smart Development, the Residents Group. Christy, I see you there. You have five minutes. Thank you very much. All right, I guess I muted myself. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of the Planning Committee. Um, I am hoping um, that, and I'll just state this up front, that a compromise can be reached through future discussion. Um, I have submitted a detailed uh, letter to the uh, Planning Committee with a series of comments, but I'm gonna focus my submissions this morning on parking solutions, as well as two significant planning issues with the proposal. The first, is a serious neighborhood compatibility issue, demolishing three homes, creating a 36 meter gap between homes on Park Mount and filling that gap with a fence and surface parking spaces will cause an undue adverse effect on the community and change the streetscape forever. It should be noted that the community center is approximately eight times the size of the existing church and that footprint uh, results in problems with respect to finding enough space for parking. 
Secondly, a proposal results in deintensification and the loss of residential lots, which have the potential in the future to intensify significantly. However, if this rezoning is approved, these lots will be sterilized from future development and intensification opportunities lost forever. So I, I submit that these two planning issues result in non-compliance with a number of policies in the official plan and the provincial policy statement relating to compatibility, community character, undue adverse impacts, intensification, efficient and sustainable development. The residents assert, and this is probably their prime concern with the proposal, that homes should never be demolished and destroyed to create a surface parking lot, particularly when there are other viable parking solutions. The community has heard about some of these solutions, some of these alternatives, so I'll try and be brief here. Um, but the church property is located within a sea of parking lots, all of which are essentially empty on weekends when the church requires parking. So we feel that there are some synergies here. Um, I have a figure two in my letter, which I'm just sort of gonna briefly put up for, for you to see, but would refer you to my letter. And it shows five potential shared parking lot locations, all within an easy walk of the church. For example, the church currently has an agreement in place to use 120 parking spots at the medical building across the street. We'd submitted that this agreement could be extended. There are another 41 spaces next door. Oh, thank you very much for popping that up. And then there's the site um, further down Green Bay at uh, 173 and 175, which is owned by the St. Mary's Coptic Church, which has been discussed um, on this call. Few parking spaces are required to replace the proposed surface parking created through the demolition of homes and permit the retention of these homes. There are approximately uh, 27 to 35 parking spaces associated with 15 and 17 Park Mount and 31 spaces associated with Can the Canfield property. A second alternative to installing underground is not installing underground parking to meet a portion of the site's requirements. Because alternative parking solutions exist, we feel, and I feel strongly, that a win-win solution is possible here. This solution would enable St. Mary's Coptic Church to build the community center as proposed while protecting the character of the community and homes from demolition. For this reason, I urge the committee members to support the deferral motion and enable a full exploration of all planning alternatives to determine if any of these solutions can be formalized. This will reduce the demand for on-site parking and could save some or all of the homes from demolition. Um, with respect to public participation, I note that there has been no public meeting since the first planning rationale was issued with respect to this pro project. Um, and I just, I really think that in planning dialogue um, can help and creative solutions can be found. Um, the second motion that is on the table today would remove residential lots from the rezoning, but approve the remainder of the rezoning. And once again, alternative parking um, arrangements could help with that. One minute. Okay, the PPS and Ottawa's official plan provide the planning tools to support these motions. Um, and I think that's a really important point. Um, I feel that the policies with respect to intensification, efficiency and sustainability should be given considerable weight when, uh, when considering this planning application in light of the city's recent mandate to dramatically intensify the general urban area by 60, 60%. Um, since city council voted to implement this, um, I have seen sort of a, a shift in planning uh, committee decisions um, to have these intensification focuses, impact decisions. Um, in light of the loss of homes um, that is resulting from this proposal, I, su I suggest that this would make intensification targets harder to reach in the future, and therefore this would be a perfect spot to include these things. Um, if a deferral or compromise can't be achieved, I'd submit that the rezoning should be rejected for the two planning concerns that I have uh, nice. had to discuss, but I'm hopeful for a win-win solution and a compromise in this Thank matter. you. Um, Councillor Leeper. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Christy, sorry, I just want to make sure I understand uh, one of the points that you were raising. Uh, you spoke about shared parking arrangements being supported in, I think, the, the provincial policy statement and the official plan. Can you unpack that a bit for me? I, I was just a bit unclear on that point. Certainly. So I think, um, I mean, if we, if we take a step back, um, both the provincial policy statement, which of course sets the planning direction in uh, the province of Ontario and the official plan, which you know, focuses on, on Ottawa, both have, have intensive policies with respect to efficient use of um, land and development. 
And I'm submitting that because there is this sort of ample amount of alternative parking that um, demolishing three homes, which could be um, intensified in the future, um, isn't perhaps the best planning decision or the highest use of those lands. If you can sort of retain one or two or, or some of those homes um, and intensify, you know, which could have future intensification and locate parking elsewhere, that would seem to be um, a helpful, you know, solution. Um, further, um, if you go to section 2.3.1 policy 32, it's, it's in my letter, so I, you can sort of reference it there. Um, there are policies in um, the Ottawa official plan that encourage um, supporting arrangements to share parking um, with you know, multiple land users, as well as providing underground parking. Um, this policy is sort of specifically related to areas with intensification requirements, um, but I would submit that in the future, um, sort of all of Ottawa is subject to intensification requirements in light of sort of the intensification target. So it just, it's just, it's a, a policy that applies to more intense areas right now, but I sort of see that as, you know, sort of the future path that Ottawa is seeking to go down in terms of their decisions with respect to land use and intensification and sustainability. I know when we voted on the growth management strategy that we all put hand on heart and uh, committed to ensuring that intensification is is balanced through the city. So I think we have to look at every area of the city as a potential intensification area. So you would suggest that those official plan policies uh, that take support shared parking are, are really relevant everywhere then? Yes, I would. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Leeper. And just uh, building on that uh, conversation about intensification you brought up, um, how do you justify then the loss of those homes with regard to a suggestion that um, a property on a major Ottawa arterial road be rezoned for a parking lot and the loss of uh, possible intensification in numbers that would far surpass that? Just wondering how you just suppose those two things. Sure, no, I think that, that's a great question. So I would suggest that the use of the Green Bank property um, should be sort of a, an interim measure in, and sort of it could be used until there is a proposal in place to you know, further develop and intensify those lands. So I sort of see sort of the shared parking solution or arrangement as you know, perhaps you know, borrowing from multiple locations and lots and perhaps evolving over time, um, because I could certainly agree with you that the Green Bank property should be developed and intensified in the future. However, um, just like we saw with the two Canfield property, which is the daycare, um, there's historically been an exception zone that permitted 15 parking spots for that site, which didn't have adequate parking to be sort of set aside and used um, from the one Canfield church site. Um, so should there be a sort of a future development of the Green Bank property, um, I would argue that some, and we aren't talking a lot of parking spaces, um, could be set aside once again for use um, by the church. And that could be through you know, service parking, underground parking, whatever the proposal is um, for the Greenfield site. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moffat, question? Uh, thanks. Actually, you asked the question that I was considering which is the 173 and 175 green bank property just just on that though there we also councillors made a decision in uh, Kitchissippi ward not long ago denying a parking use on a property for the purposes of future intensification because on, on that notion that we don't want to lose that property to a f future intensification use it's a property that's zoned for mid-rise to low-rise development which would be a far greater intensification number than what you would likely see on an existing residential lot. So it's, you know, your point is noted, uh, Chair Harder, and uh, it is something that you do have to permit a zoning bylaw amendment to allow for parking to occur there. So you're back into that window of saying, well, once you allow it, how do you pull that back? Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Moffat. Um, so another question for you, um, Christy from uh, Count. I'll just make sure that it's the last. Councillor Eglai, and then we'll go to the next presenter who is James O'Grady. Thank you. 
Anyway, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you, uh, Christy. I know you've worked quite closely with the community uh, on this on this file, um, and I know you also only get five minutes to make your pitch. So um, I'm wondering if if you could expand a little bit the logic behind the 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 second motion, the sort of the carving out motion. Certainly, in discussions with with Councillor Leeper when he first suggested to me this was kind of a a new concept to me in terms of dealing with with uh, with the development application. So maybe you could explain the logic from the community's perspective uh, behind uh, behind that kind of legal approach uh, to resolving the issue. Um, certainly. So um, sort of the idea of this motion was that. Um, at least two of the properties, um, 17 Park Mount Crescent and nine Canfield Road um, are sort of far enough away from the uh, community center property um, that um, the community center does not impinge on those. And parking is sort of focused on both the Canfield Road property and then the Park Mount property. It's also on 15 um, Park Mount. However, the community center property um, based on some sort of review of the site plan. And, and this is a bit of a question in my mind because I'm reviewing the site plan, you know, with, you know, various bits of paper and stuff, but it would appear that the community center either overlaps the 15 Park Mount property or is pretty close to the 15 Park Mount property. So if that is the case, and I'm sure the applicants can inform me of that um, more clearly, then 15 Park Mount Crescent would not be able to be carved out and left as a residential zoning, but certainly the other two properties could. And um, the logic of that is by having those retain and are like a residential rather than a minor institutional zoning is those properties would be able to be intensified in the future. And A, obviously you wouldn't lose the properties right now in their current form. And I think that all relates sort of to the housing crisis, the move to intensify the um, sort of direction that city council is, is moving. And then it would, then enable the, the, the parking that one is losing, obviously, in, in, um, in sort of having that rezoning carved out and not part of the what's seeking to be approved could then be found alternatively through shared parking arrangements. I mean, underground parking is another option that could be put on the table as well. But I think sort of what that does um, is it permits another way of having a win-win situation and that the church is you know, allowed to proceed with their rezoning and the size of the community center as proposed. 13 Park Mount remains, um, yet it gives sort of something back to the community who's concerned about sort of the loss of residential homes, the loss of continuity around Park Mount. I think um, there would be um, a desire in this motion as well to have the home at 15 Park Mount Crescent retained, um, even if it is forming a portion of the site. So that's sort of the thinking of that. Um, um, I mean, I also think as I was pretty clear in my presentation, strongly support the deferral motion, which is gives you know parties a chance to discuss and sort of see if there is common ground and see what is possible. Because I think planning is about discovering what's possible and making the best decision. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Ms. Ross. Next up is James O'Grady followed by Nancy Moynihan. James, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you for, uh, for doing this today. I just wanted to throw in a couple words and perhaps give you some background. Uh, I am the former president of the Trend Arlington Community Association. And as president, um, I had the opportunity to speak to the church on a number of occasions. I'm also, and you wouldn't know this from my last name, but I'm also of the Greek Orthodox faith. That was my mother. Um, so I do have a connection through to them through that. I had spoken to them at length about the property across the two properties across the street beside Shoppers Drug Mart. I think that's 173 and 175. Um, Keith is nodding, so that's good. So that those two spots are not big enough to talk about um, what we what they were thinking at that time, which was to build a retirement home on that location. And they've gone through that process and discovered that. Uh, I would say to you that this is the same scenario now with this location, that it is too small for them for what they want to do, and it doesn't allow them to grow. So their community in 10 to 15, 20 years is going to grow considerably. Uh, there are lots of little kids that are running around there on Sunday. Uh, so what's going to happen at that point? 
Um, I would suggest to you that, that they really need to look at a better way of, um, of achieving what they're trying to achieve uh, with the properties that they have in our community and also elsewhere, because I do understand that they hold properties out, outside of our community. Um, and I would urge you to allow us as well to give us a chance to negotiate with them to find a better option. There is plenty of parking space that is not used on Sundays at Knoxdale Public School, at the doctor's office across the street um, that can easily be repurposed. And there's also the opportunity for underground parking. So instead of harming our community, let's try to do the intensification that um, that the city is trying to achieve, let's try to do it in a smart way that will help preserve a community that has been quite injured by the tornado in 2018. That's the area that I live in, but um, this isn't far away. Obviously, I pass it every single day and have for 50 years. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, uh, James. Um, Scott Moffat, Councilor Moffat has a question. Thanks. I just want to clarify one thing you said. You mentioned that the properties at 173 and 175 aren't big enough to be able to accommodate a development, yet they're no, the exact I, same size as 151 Green Bank Road, which is something you opposed in the past. Yeah, I didn't say not big enough to, to for development. I, I do think it would be actually a better spot for the community building, um, but it wasn't big enough to put in a retirement home with... Uh, ground level shopping and the types of things that they were anticipating. This was maybe uh, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. All right, but you do confirm that it would accommodate the exact same building type that exists at 151 Green Bank Road. I'm not, I'm not suggesting it's not ripe for, our, for development. That was the whole intention of why they removed the homes on those properties. It's just that it wasn't big enough for what they were intending to do there. So it would be an option for them to put the community center there instead of where they're thinking of now. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, James. Um, Thank next speaker is Nancy Moynihan, followed by Sean Devine. Nancy, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Um, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Committee. Uh, my name is Nancy Moynihan. I live at 21 Park Mount Crescent, two houses down from the proposed development. I lived here with my husband, Scott, for almost 38 years. We got married, had our children, raised them, and are now hoping to retire in place. Both my husband and I work from home, so this street has been our refuge. We are invested in this community through scouting, guiding, the community association, various school studies, and whatever else needs input. I'm speaking on behalf of both of us today, my husband and myself. We became aware of the proponents' expansion plans three years ago. It disturbed us to see plans that involved demolishing homes on our street and clear cutting most of the greenery as it did my neighbors. We banded together to form a grassroots community group, Trend Arlington Residents for Smart Development, for which I am treasurer. We represent 200 community members, all concerned enough to fund incorporation and the hiring of a lawyer and planner. We initiated conversations with the proponent through our counselor, Keith Egley. We feel our concerns as homeowners and longstanding residents of this community have been minimized by the proponent and the planning department report does little to allay our concerns. They asked us to let us know what you think, but don't appear to be taking our thoughts into account or dismissing them without due consideration. Part of the covenant with the city when you invest your life savings in a home is that you won't be constantly fighting to preserve the environment and quality of life in the community where you purchased your home. We know things do not stand still. We know the city grows and changes over time, but we chose our home, street and community very carefully and could never imagined that an organization would purchase residential homes, plan to demolish them, and rezone the properties as proposed. If this can be done once, it can be done again and again in communities in any part of the city, even where you live. No community is safe if this project cuts into the heart of a quiet residential street can proceed. Homeowners on our street are both neighbors and friends. Some have lived here since the first homes were built in the community 55 plus years ago. Others who grew up here have returned to raise their own families and still others have moved to be within walking distance of their extended families. 
grandparents to be close to help with childcare, and grown children who return to be close to and help care for their aging parents. So we have young families with babies and children, retirees, and everything in between. Let me show you what our neighborhood looks like and what will be lost if the development proceeds. The first picture you see is from my driveway looking towards the homes that will be demolished. Next picture, please. Park Mount Crescent is a local road which is narrower than most, a low traffic crescent with Springdale Crescent attached to it. Homeowners and their visitors drive on these streets. We can easily walk or bike on paths from our home to the local park stores and the NCC green space surrounding the Bruce Pit. As part of a mature neighborhood, homes have well-established hedges, shrubberies, and large trees. Picture three, please. We're close to Green Bank Road, a major arterial on which the traffic has increased significantly in the last three decades, but we have been protected somewhat by this green barrier. Picture four, please. Trend Village, the first part of the Trend Arlington community to be developed, was planned and built as an electric community with underground wiring and few street lights. The Park Mount streetscape consists of bungalow, ranch style, and two story single family homes. 60% of the houses on this street are bungalows. For comparison purposes, a bungalow is 4.4 meters tall, and the proposed community building at 10.8 meters is more than double that height. We are, we are concerned as to how it will affect our sight lines and privacy. Currently light pollution is minimal as the street is primarily illuminated by driveway light posts. This is a beautiful feature of our street which we will be significantly altered when there is lighting spillover from the community building and parking lot onto our properties. Spillover a six foot fence will not block. Demolishing homes on our street along with the trees that protect or separate them, will essentially punch a hole in the street to Green Bank Boat Road and will expose us to the traffic, lights, noise, and noise and air pollution of this major road. We purposely chose a quiet street away from the exits to Banner Road. This will be lost and there are no remedial actions that can fix this. The proponents will use the property primarily for weekend services, go home at night to their own communities and leave these things for us to live with and we find this fundamentally unfair. We are not opposed to the community center being built by the proponent on their property. Our problem is that the community building proposed is too large for the site. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Moynihan. Um, I don't see any one questions. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, next speaker is Sean Devine, please. President of Trend Arlington Community Association. Sean, are you here? I thank you for your uh, presentation. Are yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm here. Can you message yesterday? You're welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, so thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to the Planning Committee for hearing us. Uh, on behalf of the Trend Arlington Community Association and in my capacity as president, I do ask that the Planning Committee deny this application in its current state. Um, before I get to my prepared statement, which I'm going to try to edit on the fly because so much has already been said, I, I do want to echo Councillor Eglai's motion to at least defer a decision on this matter so that the church and the community members can sit down and properly negotiate a mutually acceptable solution because my genuine fear at this point is if that if we don't, there might be permanent damage to the relationship between a church and the community in which that church is located, which in my opinion would be quite unfortunate. So uh, Trend Arlington Community Association, we advocate for the residents of our community. And as such, it is worth noting that among our residents, there are certainly some who attend St. Mary's Coptic Church and who support this expansion. However, through the dialogues and the consultations that we have had with our community, we have counted a significantly larger number of residents who oppose this application. Um, so we're going to focus our concerns on the grounds of insufficient parking, traffic, and safety issues, which we believe would greatly impact all of those who use Canfield, Rose, uh, Canfield Road to access Trend Arlington. Our concern with this application is that 
it would cause a permanent adverse impact on the surrounding community when, as you now have repeatedly heard, there are alternative, there are alternative options that we believe haven't been fully cons uh, considered. So to just get specific for a moment, the applicant is requesting a reduction from the minimum overall site requirement of 113 parking spaces down to 98 spaces. Now, it hasn't been mentioned yet, but there is a well-documented history of church members frequently parking illegally in no parking spaces on Canfield Road, which does cause all kinds of traffic concerns. Um, and as you have heard, the church hasn't yet been able to secure a long-term parking arrangement off-site. For us, it's difficult to imagine that allowing a new and very large community center to be built with a reduced parking requirement would not lead to a continuation of these kinds of parking concerns. Um, now, speaking of the community center building, because despite the fact that uh, the city planner has recommended in her report that the community center building only be permitted as an ancillary use to the church, our concern is that this new large community center is ultimately going to be used to its full capacity. When you consider that with an application to reduce minimum parking requirements, we fear that this would exacerbate any parking and traffic concerns that already exist. Um, I also want to focus uh, our argument on one element of the application that I don't believe has been addressed yet. Uh, so the application includes a request to amend the designation of 15 existing parking spaces currently used by the daycare across the street from permanently reserved to shared. So they want to change the designation from permanently reserved to shared. As it already is, our community experiences traffic interruptions when some parents who use the daycare park illegally or idle on Canfield Road while dropping off and picking up their children from the daycare at peak traffic times. What they're supposed to do is they're supposed to park in one of the 15 spaces at the church, cross the road safely to the daycare and cross back safely to their vehicles. Unfortunately, there are regular occurrences of disregard for this parking requirement, and so it's difficult to imagine that allowing these spaces to be shared with a growing church and a new community center wouldn't lead to a continuation of these problems. I'm not going to repeat uh, what you've heard about the fact that there are viable parking options elsewhere, uh, nor the fact that the church hasn't yet been able to secure long-term parking agreements with off-site facilities. Um, I just want to conclude by quoting the statement that Councillor Eglai submitted to uh, in the city planner's report in which he urges you, his colleagues, not to support this application because if you do, there will be no going back and fixing it. The intrusion on our community will be permanent. And so we, we sincerely ask that all alternatives be fully examined before allowing this application to proceed. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I do have a question for you from uh, Councillor Brockington. Councillor Brockington. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Devine, for your presentation as well. Can you describe the community association's attempts to engage the church and or the development team on this matter? Uh, yes. Um there has been, um, as has been mentioned in the planner's report, there has been consultation uh, in the past. Um, most of that consultation took place at around the time when the earlier plan had been submitted. So we had uh, reached out to the church, the church and its planners, uh, Nancy Malosh reached out to us. So we did act as intermediaries between the church and uh, the community to hold consultations. However, I would say that those consultations um, have fallen off the map, I imagine, I suppose. Um, once it kind of became clear that uh, there, was, uh, there was an impasse, it, it does seem like those uh, consultations have diminished. Um, and so there hasn't been as much dialogue recently. And I certainly can attest to the fact um, that there hasn't been uh, the appearance of a willingness to dialogue uh, between all parties over the last several months as we approach this meeting. And 
uh, similar question. Have you had success in the past on any other issue between the community and the church? Like, is this unique, which you're scratching your head? Why is this the case? Or have you not really had much interaction in the past? Um, it's the latter part of what you just said that is, is the situation. Um, I've, I've only, as compared, like James O'Grady, my predecessor, was referring to how long he's lived here. I've only lived here uh, in Ottawa and in Trent Arlington since 2014. And I've been uh, in my role with the Community Association since 2015. So I only have four to five years of experience with the community. Um, but I, I can honestly say and I don't mean this uh, in any way disparaging of the church, but in my capacity as community association president, I have had very little relationship with the church. Um, that may be just because I don't live close to the church, but I, my community association has had much more dialogue and much more of a relationship with other churches in our community than we have with St. Mary's Coptic Church. Um, full transparency, one of those churches that we do have a much stronger relationship, they are much closer to where our community center is located. So proximity might be the builder of that relationship. But we also have another relationship, a, a very extensive relationship with another church that is certainly further from where our community center is located. But if I am completely honest, although we certainly have had a relationship with the church over this issue, we haven't had, when I say we, I want to very specifically say my community association has not had much of a relationship outside of this dialogue. That said, they may have close relationships with, with residents who live nearby. I wouldn't know as much about that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Devine. Um, now we're going to go to uh, Nancy Malosh, um, who's representing the applicant, and uh, and Miss uh, Dickinson. Are you still there? Still with us, Mary? I just think uh, there's going to be a lot of questions about what we've heard potentially. So I would just ask that you uh, keep your keep keep uh, what's going on you know, in your mind uh, and be prepared for that with whatever we hear now. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's one of the, one of the uh, faux pas or I think limitations we have when we stick to the rules that we usually go by where we have the delegations, we don't ask questions of staff, we don't ask questions ahead of time. It's just one of the things I think that's a little bit limiting sometimes. So asking for you to, um, to bring all that together when necessary. So Ms. Malosh, you have five minutes. You're followed by Bishoy Alfie Sammy. All right, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Nancy Malosh, and I'm a principal planner at Stantec here in Ottawa. I was retained by the church in uh, 2018 to help them with their planning approvals for a zoning amendment and site plan approval. Uh, the original plan was to build a new church uh, for the St. Mary's congregation, as well as a community center. Uh, the two buildings were proposed to be physically linked. The original plan meant that five houses on Park Mount and one house on Canfield would be demolished. Uh, we did, and I just want to be clear about this, we did initial consultation with the community. We had uh, three, and it's documented in Ms. Dickinson's report, uh, we had, the, uh, on behalf of the applicant, we had three small uh, community uh, committee meetings, uh, at least two of them were held at uh, my office at Stantec. Councillor Aguilar attended these meetings and we had at least three small meetings and that was followed by one large community meeting on March uh, 2019 at the, at the uh, Trend Arlington uh, Community Center, community building, and there were about a, 100 people in attendance. Uh, as well, uh, we had a request from uh, Sean Devine, who just spoke, to meet with the executive of the community association. I believe that was at, following the public meetings, so I think it was in April of 2019. 
and uh, Bashoy Sammy and myself attended to meet with Mr. Devine and uh, his uh, executive on the community association. And that was simply to answer questions and exchange information. Um, and it is my recollection that uh, when uh, the uh, revised plan, the 2019 concept plan that you see there uh, did um, uh, come out, and was ready for release, I contacted by email Mr. Devine and um, suggested that we would certainly be prepared uh, to uh, meet with him. Uh, and I, uh, that meeting uh, did, not, uh, did not occur. Um, so there was opposition to the, propo the original proposal at the March 2019 meeting. Certainly there was uh, opposition. So the church went back and revised their plans to propose a new community center, which is before you today on the 2019 concept plan. And this revised plan means that two houses on Park Mount Crescent, number 15 and 17, which the church owns will be demolished as well as one house at Nine Canfield, which the church also owns. The other houses that the church owns will continue to be rented. So with respect to conformity with planning policy, the provincial policy statement and the city's official plan, it is my opinion that staff's, um, planning staff's opinion uh, is sound and correct and that the proposed development is consistent with both the PPS and the official plan with respect to the promotion of community serving uses, redevelopment, and compatibility within the general urban area. The proposed community center is an expansion of an existing and long established church property. And I might just say, Madam Chair, the church has been in this location for 30 years. Um, and uh, it is appropriately located at the intersection of an arterial road and, a, and collector street. And in our planning rationale that was prepared um, by my office and under my direction, certainly um, the matters of intensification uh, are satisfied in my opinion. I believe that the impact on the adjacent residential area has been mitigated through building design and use of landscape screening and fencing. So in order to better integrate the community center with the adjacent community, the church undertook to, um, I believe, put forward a number of compromises. One, they scaled down the initial plan to build a new church and community center. They scaled that back and, and they are proposing only the community center. So this means, as you've heard, that just two houses on Park Mount and one house on Canfield that the church does own will be demolished. Two, the site area for the two houses on Park Mount is needed to build the community center. And without this land, the community center would be significantly reduced in size. And the church's programs, which you'll hear about from Mr. Sammy, will be compromised. So it's not just for Thank parking. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nancy. Um, oh, okay. Your five minutes is is up, but you know I don't know if anybody has any questions. Doesn't take uh, long. <laughs> no, it doesn't take long no. for it to to go uh, by. But um, I think that um, I see uh, Councillor Egli has a question for you to start things sure, off. So, Councillor Egli, and then we have one uh, after after Miss Galosh, we have one. Um, delegation, as I mentioned, just one other one, but we do have people on standby for um, um, further explanation on whatever topics you may want to bring up. But uh, next up is Bishoy, Alfie, Sammy. So, oh, uh, Councillor Brockington is, I'll, I'll have him go ahead of you. Okay, Councillor uh, Eggly? Councillor Brockington, question, question of uh, Ms. Galosh? Thank you. Um... Madam Chair, and thank you for your presentation. If, if the motion to defer this item passes and you have about six weeks to sit down with community leaders and, and Councillor Eckley, what do you, what, what are you willing to discuss? Because it's not a mandatory requirement. I mean, what, what likely um, are you willing to put on the table? 
Uh, well, Councillor, I, I believe that question may be more appropriately put to uh, Mr. Sammy, who's on next, who is representing the church. But um, in my opinion, as their planner, who's been on this file for two years, um, well, well, I am always uh, for deferral and uh, and working together. Uh, in my opinion, I believe that the compromising that's been done uh, has been done on the part of the church, uh, and they've worked very hard to address community concerns. I didn't get through all of them, but you've heard with respect to um, the parking, uh, they've come to an agreement across the street, 120 additional parking uh, stalls. In my opinion, there should not be any issue with respect to parking in the area uh, as a result of that parking supply. Um, as well, uh, the building uh, height has been reduced through the process to just 11 meters. It's capped in the zoning. Um, and we know that a typical residential two-story house is nine meters, so 11 meters. So I believe that the, the church has um, worked hard to come forward with compromises and uh, um, well, I'd like to say that a deferral for six weeks will uh, move the, the ledger along. I, I, I really am not optimistic that that will occur at this point. If there's sufficient parking, as you referenced, across the street, why is it necessary to take the Park Mount Crescent homes? Well, as I mentioned just in my presentation, the uh, site area that the two houses represents as part of the overall site area is needed for the community center. It's not just a matter of parking, but uh, we've got this site access that we have to accommodate as well as aisles for parking and circulation. So to lay out the site plan, as uh, Ms. Duff Duffinez had put out, uh, shown on the uh, screen, uh, we, we need the site area. It's not just to, to provide for parking. It's for the overall uh, program of the uh, site. So you're saying the existing, the existing footprint is not large enough for the building itself? For the building together with the parking and site access, exa exactly, you can see it there. No, no, but let's exclude parking for a second. If the existing footprint is the existing footprint large enough for the expanded buildings? For the expanded buildings, um, yes, but it cannot fulfill the entire site program, as because you see there. Because you feel you need parking on site. Well, we yes, we need definitely we need uh, we need the site as it's laid out there now. All the elements are are there, and if we did not have number th the buildings at fifteen and seventeen, uh, the property line would would cut. You can see where the property line is at the rear of number fifth of number thirteen. It would cut across a portion of the building and and reduce the area by that site depth. Right. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Hang on a second. Um, Councillor Dudas. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a, a question in respect to the homes that will, uh, that the church will continue to own even after this work is done. So you, just for clarification, you said that you were going to be renting them out. Is that the, what you I heard? Yes, Councillor Dudas. Well, currently the church uh, rents the properties that they own on Park Mount and uh, they would continue, the houses that remain would continue to be rented out number 13 and uh, number nine uh, Park Mount. So I'm, what I, I in conversations with the community uh, in the lead up to today's meeting, one of the concerns they've also expressed was, you know, if this goes through and the changes are happening to the, the other houses on Park Mount, how can they confirm that this won't expand and extend to 13 and 9 after this is done? Like, what, what's, the, what's the conversation about those two properties going forward then? Um, well, they they don't uh, they don't form part of any program going forward. 
to my knowledge, the church, the church acquired those uh, properties. Uh, Mr. Beshoy, uh, Sammy can can advise as to when, uh, if you like, but they've acquired, they've owned those properties for some time and they're, they are rented out. If there was another application at some time in the future on the current site, there would, um, I'm sure, be um, planning approvals required, and there would be a public process for that. Okay, so just, and I, I'm having to ask staff that, there would be another process that would have to be undergone in order to change anything on those two sites. That's right, and certainly to my knowledge at this point in time, Mr. Uh, Sammy can confirm that, but there's no, there are no plans uh, for the future. Um, and, other than the community center. And as he will tell uh, committee as well, uh, this is a very expensive um, undertaking that the community, uh, the church congregation is undertaking at uh, significant cost, I believe about $8 million and their funding comes from the congregation. Okay. Thank you. And my questions about parking were uh, asked by Councillor Brockington already. So thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go back over to Councillor Eglide. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, Nancy. How are you good today? Morning. Just fine, thanks, Councillor. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at your slide with the 2018 concept plan and the 2019 concept plan. And, and I do agree with you that the 2019 concept plan does reduce the number of properties required by the uh, removal of the, uh, the larger church building. Um, but your 2018 concept plan did require the church to own number 11 park map, correct? Uh, yes, that was the assumption at that time, yeah. Yeah, there wasn't a way to build it without, 2000, uh, without, without uh, number 11, correct? That's correct. Okay, so, so the, the the 2019 concept plan reflects the fact that the church was in a, was unable to purchase that property. Uh, yes, well, it does. Yeah, sure, certainly it reflects that. And but it also, I would say, reflects the church's uh, um, thinking and analysis after meeting with the community, as you know, to scale back the uh, the you know the size of. But the, the short answer is you couldn't do your 2018 uh, plan without number 11. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in terms of deferral, um, uh, Councillor Brockington, Councillor Dudas asked you about about that. Are in your professional opinion, but you know because there was an original pre-consult on this file that expired. Um, there was a bit of a gap and then a new pre-consult and the process started again. So it's, it's been around for a few years. Are there any planning obstacles uh, to deferring this until, until the next meeting in August? Uh, planning obstacles, Councillor? What, what would you mean by planning? Oh, are you going to miss, uh, miss any timelines, uh, any construction uh, start dates, anything like that? Well, I think you could ask Mr. Sammy that question, but as far as planning on uh, timelines, I, I would say no. And, okay. Uh, yeah. um, so, uh, and you may or may not be able to answer this. Maybe it's a, a better question for Mr. Uh, uh, Sammy, but um, do you know whether or not, or whether you've been instructed by your client to participate in further site plan discussions? around things like fencing, uh, replanting trees, that sort of thing? Uh, yes, certainly we have talked about it. And, um, and I know that Ms. Dickinson had has had conversations with um, the residents at number 11. And uh, let me be very clear. I mean, I have, have always been very open to meet with uh, the community, uh, to meet with uh, yourself, planning staff. It's just, it's just my style of working in this city. And uh, um, we would certainly welcome that. Uh, if we could just put up the, the rendering for Park Mount along Park Mount Crescent. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Um, that shows really the condition at the end of this work that uh, people will be looking at on Park Mount Crescent. Those trees are absolutely to scale. Um, Nancy Moynihan showed them on her uh, photograph with her photography, and those trees will remain with that solid fencing. And so, yes, Councillor, back to your question. Certainly, uh, we discussed a uh, meeting with uh, number 11 uh, and any of the other residents along Park Mount. Uh, as you know, when we had some of the earlier meetings, uh, residents said quite clearly they did not want any access, vehicular or pedestrian, through from Park Mount to Green Bank Road. And of course, the, our team said right away, absolutely, no, no problem with that. So we're showing a continuous fence. So that is, in my opinion, exactly what you will be looking at. So what, I, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm hearing, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Nancy, what I'm hearing is that there is a willingness on behalf of your client to sit down and further discuss site plan with, 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 with people on Park Mount. Uh, yes, certainly. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so um, you had indicated that, to, in, to answer of one of the previous questions, that the parking issues were resolved by the fact that the uh, church had entered into a parking agreement across the street with the medical building, correct? Uh, that, that's correct. Yes, so we have uh, 98 spaces, Councillor, on the site, and then another 120 spaces at 139 Green Bank, yeah. Okay, so if that's the case, and again, maybe this will be pushed off to the, to the church board, but my understanding of that agreement is it's a one-year agreement that your client may or may not uh, renew at their at their discretion. Um, so, how does a one year optional agreement? And I think the, the 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 total length of the potential agreement is five years. How does that solve the parking problems? Well, it's renewable for a uh, five year period, um, as stated in the agreement, and. We, uh, during that time, uh, obviously we'd be looking and watching to see what the usage of the site is uh, in terms of the parking that is being provided. It's definitely very important that we provide enough parking on the subject property uh, for the community center and the church. But as we all know with churches, of course, uh, the peaking is just, you know, a couple of times a week, particularly Sunday morning. So right, but the parking structure is permanent. Yeah. And there are Seven enough days a lots, week. Councillor, as you know, your ward, but there are enough lots in this immediate area that uh, if after five years, um, another parking agreement needed to be made, I, I think we've got ample selection in this immediate area. So well, let's follow that up a little bit. So you said parking is, is necessary to be on the site. Isn't it true it's that parking is necessary to be, full stop? Yeah. That it certainly. could be across the street, that it could be around the corner as long as it's within reasonable walking distance? Well, I would, I would uh, certainly beg to differ. That's why we have minimum parking rates in our zoning bylaw and we have to meet them um, on developments. Uh, so we've worked with Ms. Dickinson to sort out an appropriate parking number on the site and that's 98 spaces. And I think that's appropriate because, um, you know, what we don't want is we don't want parking spilling over onto the adjacent residential streets, of course. Well, no, because that already happens with the current buildings. Well, I think, you know, I beg to differ. Oh I don't want to get into parking studies that have been done, but we have done our own parking studies. And certainly um, they demonstrated that any of the parking on Sunday morning was really resident parking and not particularly church parking. I'm talking about Park Mount in particular. Canfield's probably had a, had a little more parking. So, so can I ask you two more quick questions, Nancy? So the, the, uh, if Canfield was in the mix, if the community said, we don't, you Canfield, you can use Canfield as you see fit. Um, the, the two remaining properties on Park Mount are equivalent to 
according to the city planner, uh, 35, 35 parking spots. Would you agree with that number? I'm sorry, 35 parking spots where? So, so the, the, if Canfield was part of your development and nobody objected to that, then the remaining two properties on Park Mount are the equivalent of 35 parking spots. That's oh. the number that, that Ms. Dickinson came up with. Oh, okay, I, I don't know that um, specifically, but uh, I can agree with you if, if, if for the exercise. Okay, all right, thank you. And you talked about this being self-financed and about $8 million in, in, to one of the other. Do you have a sense of the, the timeline for this project? Well, when shovels, if approved, when shovels might be in the ground? Or is that a better question for, for Mr. Sammy? I think for Mr. Sammy, thank you. Yeah. Okay, no, I just was following up on the comment that you had made, that's all. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll save that for Mr. Sammy then. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Nancy. So we will go now to uh, Mr. Sammy. Um, and it's Mr. Bishoy Alfie Sammy. Are you here, sir? Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You have five minutes, just like everybody else. Thank you. Go ahead. Perfect. You're Thank ready. you so much. Perfect. Thank you. I'll talk a little bit about the church history. So the church has been on this site for over 30 years. It was the first Coptic church in Ottawa. Uh, it started with 80 families. Now we're uh, four Coptic churches serving the Ottawa region, two in the east, one downtown, and this is, uh, this is the West uh, Coptic Church. And now we're serving over 1,200 to 1,300 multicultural families in Ottawa. Uh, in the past few years, it was essential that we provide a place for our kids, our youth, our families, and seniors, and the community center building was the answer. Uh, the building will consist of a Sunday school, classrooms, gym, youth, grad, senior lounges, a study room, a library, a couple of meeting rooms, and a couple of offices. Uh, we've been part of this community and coexisting in this neighborhood for over 30 years. Uh, as many of you are aware, the church owns a daycare across the street from the church uh, for over 13 years. Uh, every year, 60 or 70 kids are registered in this daycare. 90% of those kids are from the community. They're not from the congregation. And actually, during the Christmas party, the last Christmas party, we presented the project to the daycare families, and we only received positive comments and positive questions about it. Uh, we receive emails on a regular basis from the neighbors requesting if we have available space for, for different activities. We always try our best to accommodate, but the space is very limited in the church. We've hosted elections. Our church bazaars are visited by, by many of our neighbors every year. When the tornado hit our neighborhood, we went right away and we offered our help uh, and our church to whoever, whoever needs it. We took in the Ganyan Methodist Church after the tornado because they didn't have a place to do their activities for over six months to use our church. Uh, the Trend Arlington Tennis Club requested to use our church when they couldn't use the Trend Arlington building because there was damage from the tornado and we offered it to them for free. Uh, early in the pandemic, our Eastern Coptic Diocese that involves Ottawa Montreal churches joined together and donated the production of over 20,000 ear guards to be distributed to the healthcare and frontline workers in Ottawa and Montreal. So our church is not only serving the small community surrounding it, serving Ottawa community overall. When the project was discussed almost three years ago with the community representatives, we really had high hopes that the community would be happy to hear that we're adding a building and the community center that will serve the community overall and our congregation. We believe that through our discussion with the community representation, representatives, that the church have compromised in a lot of ways and have acted in a good faith all along. We have re revised our plans multiple times trying to accommodate as much as we can. We were hoping that we could reach a point that both sides be happy about it. But we came to a point that any more compromises from our side, we'll be losing the benefit of the community center. There's a Bible verse that says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. The church truly believes after the long process we've been through and even with all the compromises that was done, that the community center building will be a great asset and will be an amazing addition for the church and the community. And at the end, as we said since day one, our aim is to serve. And the building will be open to everyone. We are happy to invest in our community through this building to help in satisfying its needs. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councillors, for listening. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Bishoy. Uh, we have Councillor Gower has questions for you. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, it's interesting because I know there's a lot of... Um, we sort of see two stories of, of churches in our city, some who are seeing a declining attendance 
and some like yours that are seeing um, attendance going up and up and up, which is a, a very good thing to see. Wonder if you could just share where's that growth coming from? Uh, I'm thinking, you know, is it is it new people arriving in Ottawa? Uh, I, I'm curious about that. I'm curious about where you're seeing your your church members coming from geographically. Just elaborate a bit on on the growth of your church and and why you're seeing that growth. So it's been mixed. So yes, we have been people coming from outside of Ottawa and we have been people joining us from, from Ottawa itself. So we have churches that are doing missionary work and, and they're helping get to people to know about the church. So, so that's one, one side. The other side, where are people coming off geographically? We have from, from all sides of Ottawa. So we have from Gatineau, from Barhaven, from Canada, from Sidsville, and from around the community. We have at least 50 families living around the church itself. We have in Banner, we have in Vaston Street, we have in Craig Henry, we have even the building across the street, the condo building across the street. So we have, and McLeod, and so it's, so they are distributed everywhere a lot, or all over Ottawa. But, but for our church, this is mainly where people are coming from. So it's a center location for the, for our uh, congregation. Okay. Um, you, you stated in your comments that you do consider yourself a committed member of the community. And um, it sounds like you want to continue that involvement, no matter what the decision of planning committee is here. Um, I wanted to ask a couple questions on that regard. I, as I understand it, you are intending to make the community center open for use by immediate members of the community. Um, can you talk about how that would work? Would it be, would there be discounts for the community or, or you know, what, what would you let the community use it for? And, and how could you guarantee to the community that that use would be continue to be possible. We offered, uh, and this actually happened a couple of days ago. We offered to, to defer to uh, make a draft agreement with the community regarding their use to the uh, community center, and it will be used whenever they need it uh, for a nominal uh, charge. It's not going to be any ex just to cover its expenses, and that's it. But uh, but it's open forever uh, they need it, and and we do that right away actually in our church building. Whenever anybody needs a space, we offer it to them if we can, if we have the space for it. And I know it's when we have the community center, we'll have enough space to cover all the activities that people need. Um, and I also want to hope you can clarify. So we've heard a lot from the community delegations with concerns about consultation and dialogue with the church. Um, what can you commit to as a church representative in terms of maybe rebuilding some of that trust or, or formal things that you could do to rebuild that communication and trust with the community going forward. Again, this is something we, again, we offered a few days ago and Councillor Glaia knows about this, that we offered to develop a committee between the church and the community to meet regularly, to discuss all kinds of projects that's coming, not only about the church, but in the neighborhood, just to make sure that we're talking regularly and communicating more and getting close to what the neighbors want and what they need. So, so we are open for communication. We're open and we have been open since day one. Since we offered the project, we've met with them multiple times, trying to compromise and trying to get to a point where they happy and be happy, we happy about it. I don't know what the constitution is of the community association. I don't know whether they allowed organizations or, or corporations within the community to join, but I also would suggest that might be something you look into as well, formally becoming and, and a member we, of that. And we offered that. Okay. And okay. we offered it, yeah. Okay, I have two quick questions about parking, because uh, it came up a couple of times. The idea of parking at Knoxdale Public School, which is just a little bit south of this property, have you, you have explored that? And can you confirm the school board was not willing to lease or rent out parking to you at Knoxdale Public? Yes, yes, we did. And the school sent a letter saying that they don't rent their parking lot if you don't rent or if you don't use the school property. Okay, I'm going to follow up with staff on that later. But and the last one, the 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 additional 120 parking spaces, how does that contract work, or how long have you secured that for? You know, it's it's one thing if it was a one year agreement. How long do you have that? Uh, the agreement is for five years. Five one, years. One year. It, one year. It's being renewed automatically, in, in case they want to change their prices, their what they charge us. But and at the end, this is to protect them in case. Three years later, they come back and they want to change their mind and stop the agreement. They they might do it, but for us, we are committed for five years with that agreement. We're not changing. Can you share how much uh, how much that costs the church to get into an agreement? 
Uh, it depends on the number of cars. So it depends how many cars are registered and uh, and they charge it per car. And so it's uh, $3 for the first 20 cars. And then uh, after that, it's uh, the flat rate, the normal rate that they have at the, at the parking. So it depends. I'm not sure how what's the flat rate on that. Okay. Thank you, Bishoy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Dudas, followed by Councillor Al Shantiri. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Sammy, I'm, I'm just curious. There's a motion that is, is coming before us momentarily in respect to deferring for another couple of weeks in respect to having the community and the councillor continue to work with the church. But it sounds like from what you're saying that there's been many, many uh, months and weeks and, and even years of conversations. What is your thoughts in respect to spending a little extra time and uh, discussing this? Uh, it, it's a very interesting question because uh, all the things I mentioned to uh, Councillor uh, uh, Glenn uh, about uh, what we offer them in terms of commitment, they refused it. And this just happened yesterday. So it seems that they are not, like we offered a lot of things, we compromised a lot, but we haven't seen any positive steps from them. So I'm not sure how those six weeks will change anything uh, in terms of uh, discussions. And, and surprisingly, uh, Mr. Tom was one of the people that we met in the past time. So him being again on the committee is not changing, like is not gonna change anything in terms of discussion. Uh, so uh, so, th so for us, we have sat, we have discussed a lot of times, but but it seems that we're we're hitting a wall, it's not going through. And, and the compromise that we did anymore will just affect our uh, service building. So we're not, we're not, we're, we're planning to discuss site plans, we're planning to discuss fencing, but talking about still demolishing or not demolishing for us, that that would be um, hard to discuss right now. Okay. And I just wanted to come back to uh, the question I asked uh, uh, Mrs. Malosh and that the houses at 13 and nine, you're going to continue to rent them. Do you have ultimate plans for those two sites or like not, what are your thoughts with respect at, to those? Not at the moment at all. We don't have any plans for them. Okay. We're just going to keep, the, we're just gonna keep renting them. Okay, and aside from the process that would be involved from the uh, the planning perspective, if there was a decision by the church at any future time to change that intention for those, um, I'm assuming you'd you'd come to a fulsome conversation with the community in respect to that. Definitely, and that's why we we suggested doing a committee between the church and the committee uh, and the community regarding discussing any future development uh, for the church. Okay, thank you. And which was which was refused. Sorry, it was refused by whom? By the, by the community. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Alshantiri. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Bishop, for uh, your presentation. And I would like to begin by saying thanks to your church during the tornado for someone who faced the same uh, tornadoes in my community. I just keep an eye on the result in your community, and I want to thank you for uh, opening up uh, the church for the community. It, my question, Bishop, as I, I said it earlier in the meeting, I'm not sure if you were here, uh, I belong to a new Canadian church, if, if that's the term I'm gonna use, uh, and it requires quite a bit of parking, and I would imagine your church is, is no different. Your uh, parishioners will, will attend from all over the city, is that correct? Definitely. And we have families with kids, we have seniors, we have handicapped, we need the minimum number of parking spots on the site for them to accommodate the, those people. We can't expect they're going to walk 400 meters uh, crossing the street with their kids and with their uh, seniors uh, during the winter time or even during the summer time to attend the church. It's, it's very hard. We need at least the minimum number of parking spots on site to accommodate that. And, and if I can ask you, like right now with the, with the current situation, how, and obviously the church is busy, as I heard from my colleague, uh, Councillor Gower, asking the question, how, how, how busy does it get now? Like, I mean, give us an idea, because some of us attend the local church in the rural area, and we see a decline. In, as a matter of fact, I lost a church uh, this year in my community. So uh, what, what's the number you're dealing with right now, a, a family? I know because so COVID, I'm not talking about COVID, I'm talking before COVID, how many family are belong to the church currently? So as I said, we are serving a total of 1300 families all over Ottawa, but for our church, we're serving around 250 families. Okay. For our church, St. Mary's Church, yeah. And the parking situation as we speak today is a capacity. Yes. 
And that's why we're adding extra 23 parking spots plus the 120 spots uh, on, uh, uh, on across the street. Okay, thank you very much, Bisha. Thank you, thank you Councillor Elshantiri, uh, Councillor Brockington, then Councillor Egwai. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, sir, for your presentation. I, I appreciate hearing the church's perspective, and I really appreciate um, uh, your enumerated list of how your church has been active in the community. I think that's some good context for us to hear today. What I'm what I'm troubled though with what I've heard is um, community member after community member have said that there has not been engagement and sort of cohesive work between both sides to get us where we are today. And you've said there has been. So I'd like to know what compromises were acquired between the two parties, the community and your church to get where we are today, because I'm, I'm getting what I think are two different sides of a story. So how has compromise been reached so far? Uh, so we met multiple times, not once, not twice, three or four times. And, and Councillor Iglai attended those meetings and uh, Mrs. Dickinson attended those meetings as well. So we've been meeting with them and been in discussions with them. Uh, the, the, the compromises we did was based on the discussions we had with the community. So in terms of reducing, in terms of uh, ca canceling the church expansion, just doing the community center, this was a big compromise for us. Reducing the number of houses was a compromise for us. Reducing the cap uh, height of the building from 18 to 11 meter was, was a compromise from us. Uh, offering a buffer that's not usually offered is a compromise from the church. Uh, and uh, closing the fence and not allowing cars or people to pass from Park Mount was again compromised from, from the church. So been, and, and even the 120 parking spots across the street was a compromise from the church, even though based on the zoning bylaws, we're not required to do any agreements, but we wanted to do it to show our goodwill and our compromisation. So, but, so, so regarding their compromisation, that's something that you should ask because we haven't seen any positive steps from them. I, I should ask the community? Yes. Okay, well, maybe Councillor Egli can address that in his comments, but you, your church owns a lot of property in the vicinity of your church, both abutting your church and offsite. What is the overall intent of owning so much property? Uh, there is no like a specific intent for, so the daycare was to provide a service to the uh, community overall. And, 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 uh, and across the street, the 173 and 175 Green Bank we still have a plan for it to do a retirement home or a senior home. And just to correct some comments that was mentioned earlier, we didn't go with a process regarding uh, the retirement home or a senior home. We just suggested the idea, but we didn't do any pre-consultation. We didn't go with any architecture plans, nothing. So uh, the idea of it's gonna fit or not gonna fit, we didn't reach that because we didn't go through the process, but the idea still exists. And we'll be happy when we do that senior home retirement home, that again, it will be offered for the whole community. So again, when we acquire property, the, the idea is to serve, is not just to uh, take it for ourselves and, and make a business out of it. It's a, it's a service that we provide from the church. One question I asked your planner was whether or not it's possible to build uh, the second building on the current property. Um, you would have to give up some parking, but given all the property that you own in the vicinity and or agreements that you may have with other private property owners, why is that not an option you would seriously consider and not have to uh, remove some of the homes on Park Mount? So we're not going to give up only a parking lot. We're going to give also a size of the building, the building itself. We're losing some program requirements when we keep the houses. So it's, it's two things. It's not one. Okay. And, and like... Other options are perhaps you don't retain the current site you're on. Maybe you're trying to fit too much on a parcel of land where you may be better on another parcel of land, perhaps close by. You, you own a lot of land, you have a lot of equity. Was that an option you considered? No, we, we love our property, we love our neighborhood, we love our community, we've been there for over 30 years. It's been a central area for us uh, since the beginning. 
Uh, we're not planning to demolish our church and go somewhere else. It's a lovely church and we love it. If you've been there, you would love it the day, the, the time we step in it. Yeah. Counselor, I, I don't recall asking other people these kind of questions. So um, do you have any other uh, questions for um, Chris Choi? Well, Mr. Sammy is, is the representative of the church and I thought yeah, but, he has to answer the, uh, the question. If and, I think he, and I think he has to the best of his ability. Sure, and I, I do, I, but I, I just that. wonder. I just, I just wonder, um, you know, about the, the questioning with regard to the application. So, do well, you have anything else you'd like to um, ask? We have a motion to defer that we're going to vote on very soon, and I, I just want to know whether or not that's going to be a fruitful exercise, or whether it's mm -hmm. going to be a useless six-week in, endeavor where okay. we're not going to get anything out of it. And I think you heard Councillor Dudas ask that question, and I believe that he answered it. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, last uh, speaker, um, Councillor Egli. Questioner, I mean, sorry. Yeah. Th thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, morning, uh, Mr. Sammy. How are you? Hi, Councillor. How are you? Thank you. Um, so I'm just, I have a copy of the parking agreement. I just, I'm just trying to clarify here. The, the way I read the parking agreement, it says that it's re renewed on an annual basis unless otherwise notified in writing by the customer, you being the customer. So are you saying on the record that the church has every intention to leave it in place for the full five years? Yes, we do. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm there, you're, commi you're, committing, you're committing to that today. Unless the parking manager, they kick us out. <laughs> no, 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 I'm asking from your perspective. The agreement says, yeah. unless notified by the customer, you're the customer, you're committing in writing, yes. uh, not in writing, but today in front of the committee, that you will hold that parking, you will renew it every year for the next, a minimum for the next five years. Definitely, yes. Okay, thank you for that. Um, now, uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna try and go over old territory, um, but it is true that the church did try to acquire number 11 Park Mount and were unable to do so, correct? That's not correct. Uh, so we stopped- so You the were able to acquire number 11? No, we, st we, we stopped, we didn't want it. So they uh, sent us an email on June, 2019. No, 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 no uh, but hear, hear me out, Mr. Councilor Sammy. Egg well, Councilor Egli, let's not get into an argument here. I'm not, I'm not trying to get an argument. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not sure he's understanding the question. My, my question- well, it's my question. Oh, sure. So, well, he's trying to answer you. All I want to know is, did did you at one point attempt to purchase it, and 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 your uh, earlier version of your proposal required the church to own number eleven to proceed? Correct. That's true. Okay. Thank but, you for that. But, but may um, I add for that? May um, add? So, may I add? Uh, no, I think Please. you answered the question. Thank you. Um, okay. So. You're um, you're proposing this multi-purpose building. You're saying it's going to be open to the community. Um, again, in front of the committee, are you are you committing that you will sit down with the community, whether that be the community association and or the uh, organization for smart development, and and hammer out a written agreement that will guarantee a minimum number of hours per year that the community can have access to the building? We'll, we'll draft an agreement and we'll, we'll discuss it with the community association. I'm not sure how, how it will be drafted, but we, will, we are willing to sit down and discuss it with the community association, yes. Okay. Uh, and, and also more importantly, with, with the citizens group for smart development, which are your most immediate neighbors. If they're willing to, yes, because what last time I heard they didn't want to. Well, Mr. Shoy, again, those discussions were without prejudice with Mr. Paulin, but your, your your proposal was, as I understood it, um, was was tied to the community group agreeing not to appeal. I think that's just fair. Okay, just so we're clear on that. Um, and um, you will have also heard, because I know you were listening to the meeting and I appreciate you were doing that to hear what everybody had to say, that there's still outstanding issues around uh, site plan, uh, whether it be fence or, or, or trees and, and, and buffering and that sort of thing. Uh, Ms. Mawash indicated that she, she would be prepared, I think, to direct it to 
continue to work with the, re the immediate residents and the organization to uh, work on those site plan issues going forward. Is the church prepared to agree to that as well? We were the one that's offered that uh, to Mrs. Dickinson and, and we're willing to sit down with the close neighbors and uh, and discuss with them the fencing and uh, and the landscape. Yes. As you will have heard in particular, number 11 had some concerns that they would like to have. Um, then uh, we, are, we are happy to sit with them. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and in, in terms of the options that you've looked at for off-site parking, did you have any discussions with the uh, office building directly across from the, the daycare? No, no, we started with the 139 Green Bank and when we got the agreement, we went through it. Okay, so you've never talked to the, the, the building trustee, which has both um, surface parking and underground parking. You mean the condo building, or you mean the office? No, building? no, the blue office building, right across from the uh, right across from the uh, the daycare at the corner of Green Bank no. and Craig Henry. No, we went with the thir one thirty nine because they have a bigger lot. It's one twenty spots. Okay. Um, so, um, in terms of the uh, the. Um, The, the deferral. So I'm, I'm getting the distinct impression that the board is not prepared or, or would not, uh, not that you would agree, the committee could certainly order a deferral, but the, the, the church board would prefer that there not be a deferral. After all the discussion that has been done since the past three years, I think we've reached a point that we have done all the compromises that we can do. And we don't think those six weeks will, will, will make any difference. So, but to the question I posed to, to Ms. Uh, Ms. Malosh, she said there were no planning impediments. You, you, don't, you don't have a plan to have shovels in the ground at the beginning of September or anything like that? No, we were planning to start in October, but because of the pandemic, things got postponed a bit. So we're planning to start early March, April next year. To start the actual construction? Yes. Okay, because she had indicated you were self-financing? Yes, and, and we have we talked already to the banks and they're willing to support us. Oh and we're, and the congregation is willing to support us as well. Okay, so one of the questions is, uh, are you prepared? Chair, Madam Chair, please. Yes, yes, How I know. I, I'm, 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 you know what, you're up. I know what you're gonna say. Go ahead, Councillor Alison Thierry. No, but how, what, what kind of question asking, when did we ever ask a developer if you have your that's money right. or that seriously? That's cancer, uh, Councillor Alson. And Chair, I'm asking the question because I'm trying to find out if the applicant is going to, from a planning or legal perspective, be put in jeopardy by, by saying that they would be okay with a deferral for a month and a half. That's the only reason I ask the question. And, I think and, in that context, and, it's more than reasonable. And he's answered. Yes, he has. And, I've, and I'm not asking that question anymore. Right, the, the question I was going to follow up with was partly a discussion that you and I had had, Madam Chair, is whether will would the church be prepared, uh, Mr. Sammy, to leave the houses that that are in place, so to speak, um, leave them in place and, and and not demolish them until the church is ready to start construction? And that's what we're planning to do. Okay, so you're confirming that as well. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. Once I, no, I, I appreciate that. Be... I appreciate that 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 will they will stay in place until you're ready to go. Um, yes. And uh, so I, I will have some questions, uh, Madam Chair, arising from some of the commitments that, that have been made by Mr. Bashoy on the record here today, and whether there may be a way to, 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 to better codify that for the community, as we've discussed previously, um, and which and may we... And we're at that point now. So just before, if it's all your questions for um, Mr. Sammy. If you just give me one second to quickly look at my notes and I'll, I'll confirm. So Mr. Sammy, while Councillor Eglai is doing that, I want you to know that there was a couple of times that you wanted to say something and this would be your opportunity to say it when Councillor Eglai is finished speaking. I'll be asking you, what was that? So For hang on, Park Mount. See it. No, it, it, I'm not leading you anywhere, okay? I'm just saying when Councillor, let's see if Councillor oh. Eglai has any more questions for you. Okay, thank you. No, I'm good, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, so just very briefly, uh, uh, Mr. Sammy, you, there was 
couple of things that you were trying to uh, to say in response to the questions? The most important thing was 11 Park Mount. So yes, we had a discussion with them earlier when we the plan was the bigger demolishing all six houses. But since we decided that this is going to be our focus, the community center building, there was no discussion whatsoever. And there has been emails they sent us regarding that and we just didn't reply back because we're not interested and we don't want to buy it and there was another house actually that was for sale 11 canfield on february march 2019 we didn't approach it even though it's just right across beside this the house that's going to be demolished nine canfield and we didn't approach it we didn't uh, offer we didn't do anything about it because we're not interested we're focused on what we have because that's the most important thing right us right now for us okay thank you very much i see no other questions uh, now, um, que questions of uh, Ms. Dickinson or and wrap up. Anyone uh, who uh, wants to, please uh, start waving and I will, uh, okay. Does anyone besides Councillor Egli want to ask a question of staff or um, speak to wrap up? I see Councillor Leapers waving in the, in Hollywood Squares. Go ahead, Councillor Leeper. Oh, I see Councillor Hubley after him. There. Okay, so Councillor Hubley, put your little uh, hand up. So, Councillor Leeper. Oh, sorry, Councilor uh, Hubley. Chair, I, I don't have a question. I was just uh, going to look at Hollywood Squares that you were mentioning. Sorry. Oh, okay. Perfect. Councillor uh, Councillor Leeper, please, and then Councillor Egglie for wrap up. Thanks, Chair. Um, I do have one quick question for staff. Uh, Ms. Malosh mentioned the, the minimum parking requirements. Uh, had this been, for example, a, a different development with a different property assembly, had the owner come to staff seeking uh, reduced parking uh, in order to make a development work here, be it a commercial development or otherwise, would staff have been open-minded to contemplating a reduction from what the minimum parking requirements would be? Uh, Madam Chair, we obviously look at every development application um, specifically to that application. Um, we are always open. We, we are obligated to review a development application that comes in that asks for a reduction, and we would make that decision based on the merits of the application. So, for example, and this applies to this site, we looked very carefully at how the church functions in order to determine that the 15 space parking reduction was, um, was logical because they use the church at one point in, in during Sundays and then everyone moves into the other space. And so th the fact that both buildings are not on a regular basis intended to be used simultaneously, that was the basis for the, the reduction in this case. So similarly with other development applications, the answer is yes, we would give it consideration for a reduction in parking. Yeah, minimum parking requirements are, are not cast in stone, and I would suggest that, in fact, this city council has made a, a commitment to uh, reducing and eliminating minimum parking requirements because uh, I think the planners have said, with respect to our official plan, there is no car-centric way in which we can build a sustainable city. Uh, we have to look at parking differently than we did previously, uh, and that's going to be the case whether we're in Kitchissippi Ward, whether we're in uh, Knoxdale Ward or whether we're in uh, um, any other ward in the city. Um, and so I just want to come back to Ms. Ross's key point. Um, there's a, a lot of discussion here, obviously, about uh, the discussions that are taking place between the residents. And I don't want to get in weeds. I want to uh, come back to the main point that Ms. Ross made, which is that it is inappropriate in an official plan environment like we have to replace housing with parking. Um, I think that we send the wrong message to the residents of Ottawa, and I think we send the wrong message to developers if we approve um, replacing housing with parking. That doesn't meet with the intent of our official plan. It doesn't meet with the intent of our emerging transportation master plan. Uh, it is it is inappropriate. And I think we heard, you know, the, the, the requirement here would be for a redesign if they were forced to work on, on the property, the original property, maybe with the, the Canfield property, they would need to do a redesign and they would need to find 35 more spots. They have found 
you know, uh, over a hundred spots elsewhere in the community within easy walking distance. People who are parking at some of their temporary parking are having to cross the road. It is not inappropriate to take a look at the other properties that they own within close proximity and ask that those be looked at for parking in order to avoid replacing housing with parking. Um, Green Bank's evolution is going to be slow. And yes, uh, Councillor Moffat, we have um, finally started to say no when perpetual requests for exemptions to surface parking lots are being sought. Uh, but in general, uh, we are, um, we have a mechanism for temporary exemptions because we are going through that transition right now. And I think Ms. Ross's point with respect to pursuing shared parking responsibilities or shared parking solutions uh, as a way to get us through the transition to a less car centric uh, city is is well taken um you know we uh, we have a housing crisis this uh development we all want to support the church we want to support its programming but the the balance between what they can actually pragmatically accomplish in terms of building the community center they want finding off-site parking in order to service it um versus uh, replacing housing with parking in the midst of a, uh, a housing crisis. I, I just think that we need to send the right message to people who want to develop property moving forward. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, uh, Chair, whether you want me to actually read the motions at this point. No, not You're at good? all. I've got uh, still, I've got a couple of people asking questions and uh, I think the motions have been on the screen and we know what they're about. Councillor Gower. Thank you, Chair. It's a quick question for staff, probably Mr. James, or I guess uh, Ms. Dickinson. It's about parking, because I asked earlier to the applicant about um, Knoxdale Public School parking. Just for clarification, is the school board even allowed to lease or rent out parking to a church like this? What does the zoning say on the school board land? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the zoning for the school board is uh, institutional. It's an I-1A, it's a minor institutional. Uh, it doesn't allow a parking lot as a permitted use. So for parking not associated with that school use to be on the school, uh, it would need a rezoning to allow ancestor, uh, ancillary parking. Um, so without something, without the rezoning happening, um, it would be in contravention of the zoning bylaw. So the school board would have to initiate their own zoning bylaw amendment change along with the, all the costs and so on. Incurred yeah. with that? Well, yes, Madam Chair, the school board as the property owner would, would be, uh, would initiate it to allow uh, the members of the church to park there. Okay, thank you. And just, uh, you know, something as we're updating official plans and looking at parking policy, it's, there are a lot of underused parking lots across our city at different times of the day. And, you know, I think it's something we should start looking into uh, having a little more flexibility so we can share these parking spaces more effectively. Thanks, Madam Chair. Well, just, uh, we're going to go to Scott Moffat next, but um, on that, uh, when we built the mosque in uh, on Woodruff Avenue in Barhaven, um, certainly we had an arrangement that uh, benefited both ways with the uh, French uh, public board, uh, Michel Jean, they uh, call Michel Jean, and um, which is right beside it as they did with uh, Kelly Funeral Home. So, you know what? At times, uh, places, uh, uh, institutional places, need extra parking. Uh, sometimes, you know, on specific holidays uh, or and the school celebration. So we work it out and it's, uh, and it's worked out many times all over the city. Uh, Councillor Moffat, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Just a quick question just on, um, I know a lot of the notion of the deferral would be on working with, between the community and the, and the church on the whole notion of parking and finding parking elsewhere. But if the city were to allow a building of this size to be built by not meeting the minimum requirements for parking on site and that that parking was found elsewhere on, on different sites. What happens 10 years, 15 years from now, when those sites begin to look at redevelopment, what happens to that parking requirement in that the actual site, um, the subject site does, still doesn't have the sufficient parking required under our under our uh, policies. That's a question more for Tim, Mark, I'm not sure. 
chair and in the instance put by Council Moffat, the uh, institution or whatever the use is, uh, would, if it doesn't find a, a um, another site for the parking, would be in violations of its zoning. Uh, so it would be a, a true concern for the institution at the time. It would have to find another site, perhaps construct underground parking, or come to the city for a rezoning or cease operation. Those would be the four options. So the reality is that for us to approve it today or any day, uh, they need to be able to show that they can have parking in perpetuity uh, without them having to come back and ask for another change later on to permit that perpetual parking. Madam Chair, I, Mr. James may know of instances. I am aware there are instances where we, the city, has permitted off-site parking uh, and the, the use in question is exposed to the risk that the councillor has identified. All right, thanks for that, Tim. Appreciate that. Did you have anything to add, uh, Mr. James? No, just just to say that um, that uh, Tim is right. If um, if you have offsite parking, and uh, as you say, for a certain little bit, like a limited amount of time, um, and it's not entrenched within the zoning bylaw, and it's taken away, it will create a zoning problem uh, with parking in the area because they will be in violation of the zoning bylaw. And they'll no longer have the ability to park on that site, which will cause them to seek uh, parking in, uh, such as on-street parking, or in, as a solution. And so, how would we deal with in perpetuity, perpetuity as well? When you think about it, say somebody, um, you know, say in Councillor Leaper's area, because he certainly has enough applications. Fifteen pages, I think you have on Dev Apps right now. But who's counting, uh, Jeff? But you know. It, you know, parking is always like a hot issue in, in Kitchissippi for sure. So just take that as an example and say somebody says, oh, I'm going to have an arrangement with Tubman's or Tubman says I'm going to have an arrangement with whatever. And then Tubman sells uh, or some, and then what has happened to the application that required a certain number of parking, what happens then? Uh, where do we go from there? Um, anyway, is, is that sort of the thing you're, you're, you would be concerned about, Mr. James? Um, well, certainly if, um, if you have parking that's off-site and it's eliminated, it does create a problem that uh, that parking, as I said, has to go somewhere, uh, for example, on-street parking. Uh, but that's like, uh, in this case here, that's why we like to see the parking uh, on the subject property. And that's why the zoning bylaw has um, uh, parking uh, rates that are for every use, and as members of the committee know, uh, for every uh, use that has a rate of parking associated with it, it has to be on that site and that's why it, it that's put in the zoning bylaw and it creates a simplicity of you don't get when you have parking off site or parking down the street that you that would create that problem um, and uh, that's why you have it here and and that's why through the site plan control process um, and if you went there today and I saw the pictures about everything being uh, nicely landscaped and that's why through the site plan control process you can mitigate the impacts of that parking uh, next to residential developments in this case, we're not introducing a new situation. We're augmenting the situation that does exist where you have parking that is landscaped next to residential. And that's exactly what the uh, expansion of the community center was just will allow to continue to happen. Yeah, and exactly. And one of the benefits of uh, when Hydro Ottawa sold their uh, former head office to uh, a mosque uh, in the Hetherington area, um, one of the beauties was the on-site parking that was available in a large number. But still, Councilor Brockington, you'll recall the number of people um, that were very concerned about uh, the impact that that would be on their community, which is in your ward. Um, okay, so I think enough about parking and stuff from me. Anyways, we have we have only uh, the uh, ward councilor, uh, Councilor Eglai, left to. Uh, I just want to add uh, one more thing. Sorry, just yeah, oh, sorry. while I was done sorry. in the parking but thing, I, I just want to say, no, no, it's all good. I just want to say one more thing. I know just in speaking with the community, and I think this is probably a valid point, it's not exactly relevant to this application, but just on when we go into the official plan, a lot of communities along Green Bank, along roads like Woodruff, don't necessarily back directly onto an arterial. Uh, Park Mount does. It might be wise to consider how we can look at that in the official plan review more to maybe to, to Councilor Eglai to, to keep an eye on this to make sure that those those properties that come off of Park Mount north of this site don't somehow get 
get assembled and reversed uh, for their frontage on Greenbank because then that would really open up Park Mount to to Greenbank Road. It's just something to consider in terms of how we how we look at our official plan uses on on areas like this uh, because that does back right on and even north of that as you get uh, toward Baseline Road as well. That's all. Yeah, that's a really good point for sure. Um, let's see. Just make sure. Yeah, Councillor Eglai. Just a quick question before I start my five minutes. Um, is, is my five minutes for questions to staff as well as to speaking to both motions? Yes. So I will, obviously I'm gonna give you some latitude within reason, so. Um, I appreciate that, thank you. Because my first question is, is more procedural and for Mr. Mark. Mr. Mark, we, we've heard um, this morning a number of, of verbal commitments from the app applicant to maintain uh, and renew so that there's a, a five-year parking deal is in place um, to uh, they commit it not to demolish the properties until they're they're in a position to start the construction we've heard that they uh, are committed to uh, meet with uh, the community association and uh, the uh, residents association for smart development to work out a deal around community use of the building and finally we heard a commitment to uh, work with the community members going forward to refine the site plan before before it's finalized and finished is there a way for you to draft a motion for this committee that that codifies that so that what has been said in front on the committee by the applicant, by Mr. Sammy this morning on behalf of the church. Is there a way to codify that so it, it, it in fact will happen and there will be something there in case there's any issue about whether it should or shouldn't happen? Uh, Madam Chair, those uh, statements were heard by uh, the uh, members of the committee and of course will be a permanent record of this meeting. But I believe that all the matters identified and the councillor has just now rehearsed are all non-zoning matters. Uh, and so they are not matters that the city can direct uh, under uh, its zoning bylaw, nor, nor for that matter, are they matters that come under section 41 of the Planning Act. They are important, uh, but they're not matters that are subject to municipal regulation. So even, even, even the piece, Mr. Mark, around continuing to work with the community uh, with regard to the site plan refinement? Uh, in fact, say, although the city, of course, engages upon consultation uh, with uh, the community on site plan matters, site plan is, in fact, a matter from a legal perspective that is solely between the city and the applicant. So, so final follow-up question for you. So if for some reason the, the church does not follow through on one or all of these commitments they've made, the community has no recourse? The city has no ability to require them. Uh, and so uh, it would be uh, the community's, community's relationship uh, with the applicant uh, that would have to be relied upon uh, in order to move forward with the commitments that were made today. If, if the board agreed between now and council that such an order could be drafted, if they provided something writing to you or to the city indicating they would be in agreement with that, could it then go ahead as a motion? It's, it's not a matter of zoning concern. So I, I understand that. I'm asking if there is if there is agreement by both parties that this this should happen, it, is there any way to put some teeth to it, I guess? Well, the, there is a way, uh, but it does not involve the city. Uh, and that is between, uh, and I'm not familiar with the uh, legal status of the community group versus uh, the, um, I understand from today's meeting, this association, on the planning concern. I, I believe that one of those parties is incorporated uh, and they could certainly enter into an agreement with the church and that would be an enforceable agreement. And so that can be done, but it does not involve the city. So I thank you, thank you for that. So I I'm, I'm hope the church is listening and, 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 and has heard the concern and, and what's, what the expectations are. Um, quick question for Ms. Dickinson before I go into wrap up. Ms. Dickinson, we, we heard from uh, the owners of number 11, that they were interested in having a, a sunshade study done, and also that they were concerned about maintenance standards should a fence or trees or what have you go in between their property 
and and the church. Can you can you speak to both of those things? Uh, Madam Chair, yes. Uh, so I did speak with the the owners of Eleven Park Mount just a few days ago, and we had this discussion as well. And they brought those forward. The um, comments and responses in the report is a summary and did not get into the level of detail that they had uh, initially commented. So I'm glad that it's on the record now, the, their comments about sunshade study, for example. Um, we, the staff asked for a sunshade study when an application is asking for additional height. In this case, the institutional zone uh, allows for 18 meters and the proposed building is 11. So we're not in a position to be asking for that. Um, the uh, and then in terms of the uh, screening of the property, the that's something that we continue to look at through site plan control. It is very much a, a site plan control consideration, getting into that level of detail. Um, and I have made the commitment to the to the owners of the property that um, that that will be further considered through site plan control. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, so I'm going to go quickly to wrap up, uh, Madam Chair, and I, and I thank you for your expression. They may have a tiny bit of latitude here. So uh, it goes without saying this has been a very difficult file to navigate. Uh, it involves two longstanding institutions. You have a regional church that has been there for about 30 years, and you have a quiet residential uh, neighborhood that's been there for more than 50 and complicating or overlaying that is you have a very limited planning toolbox to address the issues. Uh, as many people have said, and everybody has acknowledged, there is a panoply of parking options all around this site, but we have no ability to, to access them. We have no ability to, to make the applicant use them, uh, it sounds, uh, even though that would be a more than reasonable compromise and, and address allowing them to have their expansion, which the community doesn't object to, and allow the community to have freedom from having a parking lot, uh, which will be used maybe one, two days uh, a week, but will sit there uh, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, forever and ever and ever. Um, I won't even get on to what the environmental concerns of paving that over might be, but, uh, or, or the intensification concerns. Each of those lots could easily, uh, if a house is knocked down, easily accommodate two homes. Um, so, Again, the, the community has never been about not wanting this expansion to happen. They, they're okay with the expansion happening. It's the manner in which it's happening. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on who spoke to who or who didn't speak to who or who didn't want to talk. The short answer is uh, there is a divide between what the church would or how the church would like to do what it wants to do and how the community would like them to do what they want to do. There's no divide over whether they should be allowed to do what they want to do. It's how they achieve that. Um, and it's especially uh, frustrating for the community that accesses Green Bank Road on every, you know, every day to go to work, to go to the shopping, whatever, that there are, uh, there's, a, there's a parking lot right across the street with an office building that Mr. Sammy indicated they haven't even spoken to. There is, there is a school uh, parking lot just down the street. There, there is a medical building uh, parking lot. There is two lots that the, uh, the church owns um, that they're not prepared to consider. And I understand, you know, whether that may or may not be the best use of that piece of property on, on Green Bank, but it's a constant reminder to community members that while homes are going to be ripped out of their street, a parking lot going to be dropped there, there's vacant lots all over every weekend in that community. Um, and, and so that's the frustrating piece. We have a problem which really doesn't have a good solution, doesn't have a good solution because we don't necessarily have the right tools uh, to, to fix it. Um, I think that there's still room to play. I think there's still room where some compromise could be reached. As I said, if the community was prepared to say, we don't care about the Canfield property, we're down to 35 parking spots we have to figure out. 35 spots. Um, there's a lot of smart people on this file from, from Ms. Malosh, who's been a planner for a very long time and does an excellent job, excellent planners in the city. There, you know, if there's a will, there's a way, and it, it seems that maybe there's not a will. Um, there's one thing we didn't talk about today, and again, it's not, it's not the greatest option, but underground parking is an option. And how do you fund that underground parking that the churches that can't afford? 
they have these homes. You don't set, you, you don't have to knock down the homes. You can sell the homes. You can sell the homes to get the money to build the parking. Um, so there are things that the church could consider doing, uh, could explain why they don't want to do to the community. And it, these two institutions are going to have to coexist for a very long time. And, and this is, I think, uh, approving today is going to put them on a very shaky foundation going forward to, to have that to have that sustainability that those two communities should and want to have. Um, we heard from uh, a former uh, minister, uh, Tom, how you can do this reasonably, responsibly, and collaboratively within the community and within a religious institution and come forward with a product that, that works. And, and his willingness to take that expertise and, and put it towards discussions over the next uh, four or six weeks. So I think maybe I'm an eternal optimist, I don't know. I think there are ways to do it. An alternative way to do it to satisfy or alleviate concerns that this is not just the beginning of a bigger piece is take some of those other properties that you still own uh, church and sell them back into the community. And that says to the community, you're not waiting for number 11 to become available, but that this is it, this is phase one, the only phase, you've achieved what you wanted to do and you wanna work with the community. So there are things that could be done. There are things that could, could uh, over the next number of weeks, I think, which could lead to a better product. Maybe it's not gonna save all the houses, probably not, but could it build some trust, some faith between the two communities? Could it, could it come up with a better product that's more environmentally sensitive, doesn't just put more asphalt down? I think it could. And I, I'm just gonna end with the following, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, very quickly. Um, and I'm gonna quote here, I said, don't it always seem to go that you don't, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. They've paid paradise and they put up a parking lot. Well, the people of Park Mount and Canfield know what they got and they're counting on you as members of the committee to make sure that it's not taken away. So I would urge you to either vote for deferral today. If you can't vote for deferral, vote against the application and, and give everybody an opportunity to try and sort this out in a reasonable collaborative way Nobody's going to lose anything over the next six weeks. We've heard there are no planning impediments, no legal impediments, no financial impediments. Nobody's going to lose anything over the next six weeks to sit down and try and chat. And that's all I'm asking you to, to approve today. Give them the opportunity to have that discussion and, and uh, try and move it, try and move it forward. I'll even sweeten the pot. I'll pay for it out of my office budget if need be. I'll pay for the services of a facilitator or a mediator to try and bring these two sides close together to try and sort this out over the next six weeks. I'm more than happy to do that. And I put that on the table if that sweetens the pot at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so we have two, is somebody talking? No, I don't know what the background is. Um, we have uh, two uh, motions. Um, prior that we'll deal with prior to the uh, main uh, report recommendation. Um, and the first one is with regard to the, do you want to, um, Councillor Leeford or Councillor Egli, just uh, succinctly say what this one is? Sure, I can quickly uh, uh, speak to that one. And that, and that, that, as I said, that's the motion for deferral. Uh, it, it, it would ask that the matter be deferred until the next, uh, the next planning meeting, which correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Chair, it's at the end of August. Um, so it would, as I indicated a few moments ago, it would allow six weeks for the parties to give one last attempt at, at hammering something out here. And, and again, uh, as I said, I'm more than happy to sweeten the pot and I, I would pay for uh, some mediator hours for someone to sit in the room with them and try and bring the sides closer together uh, to work it out. Uh, we heard from the applicant, they will not suffer in any way from this. There's no planning impediment, no financial impediment, no legal impediment uh, to doing this. Um, so they're not gonna suffer, but if you vote for it today, the way it is, the people who live on Park Mountain Canfield, they will have a lasting negative impact on their community. So I think that's worth six weeks. Um, to give everybody one last kick at the can, uh, especially when there will be no negative impact to, to not grant it. You know, it, it will not hold up in any way the project 
We've heard that. So if you still want to vote for it six weeks from now in front for the project, you can do that. But you okay. may come back in six weeks and have a better product in front of you. We're going to call uh, yays and nays on this. Uh, so this, you heard what the motion is for. And um, I'm going to start off with uh, Chair El Shantieri. No. Uh, Councillor Dudas? No. Councillor Shirelli? Councillor Tierney? No. Councillor Leeper? Yes. Councillor Brockington? Yes. Councillor Moffat? No. Uh, Councillor Hubley? No. Vice Chair Gower? No. And myself, no. That's seven to two. So would you like to introduce your next motion, Councillor uh, Leeper, Councillor Eglai through Councillor Leeper? Uh, yes, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have Councillor Leeper speak to this uh, as in part it was his brainchild and I thank him for that. It's a creative way to deal with this. So I'm gonna ask Jeff if you could introduce this motion. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Councillor Glay. The, the motion would remove 1517 uh, Park Mount and 9 Canfield Road uh, from the rezoning uh, so that those would continue to be residential. It would eliminate the possibility of putting parking on there uh, and it would further uh, enable staff to move forward with a uh, what pr presumably be a, a temporary exemption to the parking rules um, if they are able to find uh, another spot in which to put the parking. So that doesn't cost them for the uh, for the temporary exemption, and I, I, again, you know, this does not do anything to the community center, to the expansion of the church. Uh, I think everyone around this table considers that it is a sensitive and uh, an appropriate uh, expansion of the church's activities, but it does uh, send a clear message that we're not going to turn uh, residential lands into parking lots. Okay, thank you. Um, We'll do yeas and nays on that uh, motion as well. Uh, Councillor El Shantiri? No. Councillor Dudas? No. Councillor Shirelli? Councillor Tierney? No. Councillor Leeper? Yes. Councillor Brockington? Yes. Councillor Moffat? No. Councillor Hubley? No. Councillor uh, Vice Chair Gower? No. And myself, no. That's seven to two. Okay, now we will uh, go to the main report um, that um, Planning Committee recommend Council approve an amendment to Zoning Bylaw 2008-250 for one and nine Canfield Road and 1315 and 17 Park Mount Crescent to permit the expansion of the institutional zone and construction of a new ancillary community center to the existing place of worship as detailed in document three. Okay, so um, is that carried? Yeah. Yays and nays, Madam Chair. Yeah. Yays and nays. Um, Councillor Al Shantiri. Yes. Councillor Dudas. Yes. Councillor Shirelli. Councillor Tierney. Yes. Councillor Leeper. No. Councillor Brockington. No. Councillor Moffat. Yes. Councillor Hubley. Yes. Vice Chair Gower. Yes. And myself, yes. It's seven to two. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your um, attention and your questions and your presentations. I appreciate it. So with that, we'll go to uh, any in-camera items. Uh, we have none. Notices of motion for a subsequent meeting. Inquiries. None, any other business? Other than the information we'll wait for in that IPD, that's probably the biggest business that we have. Inger adjournment with our next meeting being a bit of a break from now, August the 27th, Thursday, August the 27th. Take care, everyone. Go find some cool shade there, Councillor Leeper. Goodbye, Thank everyone. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good Thank job. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Thank you. Thank you.